I'm, I'm just doing it with podcasts. So for anybody that doesn't know who you are and what you do or should know, mm-hmm. what would be the quick elevator pitch to anybody listening or watching this right now as to who you are and what you do? So a word. Um, my name is Coogee from Providence, Rhode Island. I own a hip-hop platform called The Daily Note, TDN Forever on all social media. Um, It's a platform myself and Louis the B started. It, we launched it in 2013, but I've been blogging since like 20, like 2009, 2010. Um. So yeah, everything is pretty much through the daily notes. So all the events that we do, the podcast that we do, the merchandise that we make, pretty much anything that comes out of like for me, like personally, is under the daily note umbrella. And the daily note is again, it's a platform for artists, creatives, photographers, all types of people that can just come together and make dope shit. It started in the hip hop world to uh, promote. Am I allowed to swear? I'm sorry. Yeah, you can go. For okay, it. cool. I'm just making sure. But um, yeah, we started it on some like. Let's promote my homie's music because I rapped for like two weeks. But like I, I learned that my forte was like putting people on and like kind of just being like, have you all heard this or have you listened to this? Are you hip to this artist? That was kind of always my specialty, even like prior to like blogging. Like I was always known for like knowing the new music. So I was like, I wonder if I can make something that we can post people like Nino, people like uh, John Phelps. Uh, these are the guys that I was coming up with at the time. And the Daily Note was born. And yeah, everything kind of runs through the daily note. I do a lot of different things. I never really like. Oh, we're def- we're gonna get into that. For Don't sure. worry. We definitely um, it's kind of hard to elevator pitch it because I do so much and I'm interested in so much. But I would just say like everything like all go all goes back to the daily note. Everything that I do is presented by the daily note. If you look at any of my flyers, if it's like my event, even it has even if it has zero to do with hip hop per se, the daily note presents. And, you know, it's so I do have a, a lot of questions ar- uh, surrounding like sure. doing multiple things because I think that might help some. I mean, uh, help me personally. So I'm doing it for selfish reasons, but also mm-hmm. I think it will help uh, people who are listening and people who are watching because the idea of being a, a multi hyphenate or a multidisciplinary creative, I think, is becoming more and more commonplace um, or or like taking one thing and kind of expanding it and see like how much use you can get out of a, out of a certain talent. Mm-hmm. Um, Victor Baez sound. Um, go brother. check, go check that episode after this, uh, you know, is one good example, but went in one direction. And then you have somebody like Jabron, mm-hmm. check the Jabron episode my uh, later on. <laughs> my guys. After this one, go listen to that one. Um, you know, doing the episode with Jabron and going through his history and, all the different things he's done and where he's at now. He took another direction. And then now we're going to talk to you Mm -hmm. and it's a third direction. But I think as just, you know, doing the research for this episode um, and for anybody who's like, looking for kind of a nard war ish thing going on. um, I'm going to be disappointing you a little bit only because you are, if, I think you are, if multi hyphenate was a person, so we're, we're going to go through all the, the hyphens, quote unquote, or all the commas or semicolons on the resume. Yeah. Um, so, cause I think that's going to cover enough time alone. So if anybody's looking for some nod war level stuff, sorry, not in this one, or maybe I'll just scratch the surface a little bit. Cause I think we need to cover everything for sure. Um, but let's start with the, you know, the, the first, the main thing, the, the thing that took you to the dance, so to speak, mm-hmm. um, which is, you know, the, now I know you said 2013 and you started with your, um, the, your business partner there, but also didn't it start in 2010 with the blogging a little bit? Yeah. Okay. So, so I did get that part, right? Cause no, I was like, you, I was like reading that. And I was like, I think 2010, can you take me back to what was going on in that era in 2010s and blogging because I think with social media the way it is now people forget like there was the music journalism era so yeah. like, I, I remember like knowing who Bobito Garcia was because Facts. of re- reading magazines and being super into that music mm-hmm. and then it was like your websites that had message boards were the official news like your underground hip hops and like like the Nike talks of the world Nike talks yep. and and like underground hip hop and then digital gravel and then um then it moved into like the blog era which is where, like my, the golden era for me yep so can we can you take take back to like I guess paint the picture of what was going on in music and and like uh, the way you saw it music sure. and culture at that time how you were experiencing it and what made you think oh, there's all these blogs going on right now. How do I get into this? So um, I've always been super into hip hop, but I would say like, I would say like from like eighth grade to like freshman year college is where like your music opinion is really like, this is what I'm fucking with forever. So as as I was getting into hip hop, um, heavy, especially like at this time, super heavy, this is like a time where like all the new artists who are pretty much running hip hop now were coming out. So like, 
and this is 09, 2010, I'm getting hip to like the Drakes of the world, the J. Coles of the world, Wale's of the world, the Kikuddies of the world. I remember like- And Drake was then the, like the new guy. He was the new guy like, at the time. He was the new guy, but he was like like the successor to Wayne almost because yeah, like, no, Wayne, was the, Wayne was the guy and then like he had the record label, he signs that mm-hmm. person to his record label. I think say, wasn't Nicki on the label yeah, like, at, so the, the, it, at the time was, too, if I'm correct? No, no absolutely correct. It was uh, Wayne, he introduced us to Nicki and, and Drake. They were, he was kind of like- by the way, growing up, huge Wayne fan, so like I was hearing Nicki, I was hearing Drake on these records because I think uh, he had him on Ransom. I forget which mixtape that is, which Wayne mixtape. Fuck, I feel like I'm gonna let Victor down. But um, you know, around this time, it just like this is like a little past LimeWire. I'm using Airs at the time. I don't know if people fuck remember Airs, but that's like the the like success of the LimeWire. I'm I was on using all, like ten different programs at the time, so I was so always downloading many, stuff. Right? So yeah, <laughs> and it was just kind of like this like wild thing where just like every day I was just discovering like th- like 30 40 new artists new songs all the time and it was just like super overwhelming but for someone like me who was just like yo I'm listening to all the shit that like I don't think any of my like homies know about like again like I remember my first time seeing the 09 double XL cover and just being like holy shit like who are all these guys look like, super cool at the time I was already a currency fan I was already fucking with Cuddy but like all the other guys that I got hip to and just being like wow I feel like hip hop is changing. I think that's the for one, the time in like my life with noticing music and fashion, all the things I'm into, where I'm just like, this is a change. I can feel this. I can feel like I'm about to be a part of something legendary. There's there's a shift. Yeah, the, perfect. Like perfect. A word paradigm for shift of yes. how music was discovered and consumed was happening at that time, and you were and you were experiencing it in real time. And again, I'm like. I'm also like growing and like becoming like coming into my own things, like finding out the, the brands that I like, finding out the with well, the things that I'm into and just kind of finding out these new mu- artists that I'm into. Because it's like at the time, like Kanye's my favorite rapper, like of all time. But I was really enjoying like just seeing like what being inspired by Kanye comes out. And then you get again, you get the you get the the Kendricks, you get the you get the Coles. Like Coles, like the first art rapper that I really, really, really resonated with. Like I really like Drake. But I remember when I got hip to Cole my freshman year of high school i was like this is amazing and i discovered all these people off blogs off the hot new hip-hops the ill roots the um hip-hop dx okay player okay player like um there's so many like i feel like i'm gonna miss so many because there's so many blogs that was two dope boys like two dope boys was heavy on two dope boys Shout i was just about to mention two two dope boys that, that was a huge one for me too i got yeah i got hip to drake because of two dope boys i'm almost sure uh so i remember being super into the cool kids i think the cool kids was like the first mixtape i downloaded when i got a um laptop for christmas i got a laptop um christmas my freshman year um my dad got me one some like wild not to interrupt i think that's another like paradigm shift idea too is like because where we are we're in Pawtucket right now Mm -hmm. um and god i'm gonna fucking age myself here i'm old enough to remember when i had to go to skippy whites which was down the street from like not there anymore but it's down and like buying mixtapes buying records because i was like trying to dj at the time but also they got raided by like the RIAA. Whoa. Like Skippy White's got raided because I did not know that. Yeah, no, they got they got raided heavily. That's I think like DJ drama shit. Basically, because they were selling and distributing, they were selling these mixtapes. They weren't making them, but they were yeah. selling mixtapes for local people, but also like the DJ drama national mixtapes. Yeah. They did get raided. They were one of many like local mom and pop shops all over the country that got raided. What? Um, Jay, actually, uh, I didn't know this. Jay. Um, and by J, I mean uh, Wayne's nasty. nasty. Okay. Um, well, there's a quote from one of your shows. I'm uh, thinking about that. But he, there was um, like a like a newspaper magazine kind of thing that they put out, mm-hmm. and there was an excerpt from one of the interviews where he interviewed the owner of Skippy Whites, the Boston store, and the Providence store got raided. Um, so yeah, talking about paradigm shifts, like people are you know getting arrested for mixtapes or getting yeah. you know, getting raided for mixtapes. So you have that going on. You have blogs going on. And then, you know, the reason why I want to do this brief aside, not to interrupt, but like no, you're good. even Jabron, when I was talking to him, like I asked Jabron going like, hey, you were working with Ye at the time, like on this, like the, I think it was the Kanye University blog. I think it's either the Kanye University or Kanye to the. Yeah. I feel like maybe they even had different iterations or names, mm-hmm. but I even asked him like, did you realize like, what you guys were building was going to be the thing to do for X amount of years. Like that was the way not just people found music, but like artists would connect with fans with, with through these personal blogs. Yeah. It's, how, it's pretty much how we consume music and how we also got like 
kind of closer to the artists that we we were fucking with. Like, because at the time too, like Twitter had just came out. Like, I think Twitter came out my freshman year of high school. Yeah, like I think like fate, like YouTube wasn't around yet, and Facebook was like still burgeoning. Or... Facebook was yeah, Facebook was still kind of like. I remember being on Facebook a little early because my older brother had a Facebook. But I remember like I feel like it was still college focused. Yeah, like, if you were very, a college kid, you had a Facebook. Account. It was very much still college focused. I remember like people not really like fucking with Facebook to like my sophomore junior year of high school because again people were still kind of migrating from MySpace. AIM was still popping, but Twitter had just come out, and Twitter was like another way I discovered music really quickly because it's just like you can say whatever you want, post whatever you want, and it was just like you can be a rapper with a random link and just put it on Hulk share and just be like, this is my song. This is my mixtape. So with all that being said, because I think there's, there's two things to consider here mm -hmm. with the question I'm about to ask. Mm -hmm. One, you have to consider what's being put out and, and how people are consuming media and putting out media at the time, which sure. we just stated was blogs yeah. and like the very, very beginning of like the social media we know now. Yeah. No, we, we really lived through Twitter. It's crazy. From a technology standpoint, mm -hmm. the flip side of that, or I shouldn't say the flip side, but like a, a side I think people don't think about is that now anybody can very easily make a website through any given services. You can make like you could literally just get one of those like um, link tree type pages and that could be your website if you want. And that's like little to no cost. It's like your online resume. S yeah. Same, same with like like blogs, whatnot. That's what we know now mm -hmm. in the day of like the heyday of the blog era. um. I don't think people realized like the infrastructure or money or skill sets you needed to have to like get one of those things just up and running on a consistent basis and making it look like not like shit. Yeah. Um, so can you expound on both of those things? Because I think now this is not to knock anybody doing anything now. Obviously I'm doing this now. Right. Of course. But I think saying you want to start like a website or, um, you know, like a video blog or whatever now and what you have to endure is totally different than back then. So yeah. when you had the, like, what gave you the initial idea of like, yeah, let's, let's do this blog or yeah, I can do this blog. Like what made you want to throw your hat into the arena? Mm -hmm. And then what were some of the, on the other side of that, what were some of the logistics of like, oh, we got to like find a blog service. We got to mm -hmm. find a hosting platform. We got to pay money to get the dot com name. We got to do all these different skill sets. So what made you want to get into it? And then what were some of the barriers of just like, how to figure this stuff out got you so um with wanting to do it so like i said i like attempted to rap for like two weeks i went to the met high school i went to like school with all like a lot of like in my opinion like a lot of legendary rhode island artists have come through that like that that year again i went to school you know i went to school at lunch i went to uh, went to school with uh, my homie big rich who had this studio called hit city where like every rapper i know started making music there so again i attempted to rap realized i wasn't good very quickly because I'm, I'm way too much of a critic to like put out bad shit um but again, I was just kind of like, I want to, I still want to be involved in this thing because I really like music. I think music's the thing that I've always loved. I've always been a fan of this thing and I'd always love talking about music. So I remember I'd always post music on Facebook, my friends' mixtapes, random shit, random Wale features and just random things all the time. But I used to post on Facebook like I post on Twitter, like I'd post all day. Like there wasn't, there was no etiquette to it. So I remember my one of my friends, Essence, I don't even think she knows this, but she basically like, kind of like gave me the idea to start a blog i remember she's like you post too much like go start like i think she's like you post too much go like write in your journal or like go start a blog i think that was her exact comment but this is my friend so she's joking but she's kind of serious and i remember being like that's actually a fire idea like i should start like something where i just post all this stuff and just direct the traffic to there um as far as figuring out the barriers i'm like 13 14 at the time i don't have job i don't have a job there's no way i can like go to my mom and be like give me x amount of money to start the thing so i started with a tumblr i some girl i went to high school with had a tumblr i remember she used to always be on it in school and it reminded me a lot of myspace and i was just like what is this and she was like oh it's like how i how i post my stuff my and pictures the thing with tumblers you could edit the html and make it exactly do, and it, you could get a theme but then you can make it do stuff that maybe it's not supposed to do or exactly. display things a certain way it's not supposed to do and if you had that skill set you could you can and, really mess with it. And not for nothing, like, I'm coming off, like, being on MySpace since I was... Which also had HTML editing, so it's, like, kind of... It was, it was like, on there, you kind of know what you're doing. It was second nature, because I've had i had a MySpace at that point since, like, fourth grade, and, like, I used to really take pride in my MySpace. So I, like, I knew how to dabble and, like, make shit look cool, so I made the Tumblr. Um, and, again, I didn't use Tumblr the way other people use Tumblr. Like, I wasn't reposting other stuff. I wasn't, like, really on my feet as much. It was very much just, like, I'm, I'm, I'm taking music, I'm uploading it, I'm putting it on the blog, I'm running it the same way... 
I look at Two Dope Boys the same way I look at Ill Roots and how new hip hop. Just uploading music, putting my opinion on it, and taking the link, posting it on Facebook. That so that was really the 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 marketing like aspect of it. However, again, I'm not thinking that far either. Like I remember just kind of like this is just for me and the homies. That was always the idea. Yeah, like you were just posting stuff. It's not like oh, I'm gonna post it this time because it's gonna yeah, get engagement. There was no, that's crazy. There was no algorithms. Yeah, there yeah. was I wasn't paying attention to comments or likes or none of that shit. It was just something I like to do, and me and the ten rappers that I knew because at the time I'm living in Georgia as well. So, so the rappers I'm meeting in Riley, meeting in Georgia, I'm just like, oh, you guys are fire, like. And I don't, I don't not seeing, I'm not seeing you guys on these blogs that I really like because at the time it's like the blog ever as dope as it was, there was, there was definitely an aspect of like, unless like, it's not like now where you can pay to get on a website or you can pay to, I mean, you could probably do that then too, but it was like, if niggas was getting posted on how new hip hop, they were nice. They were either nice or they were signed or like they had or a, they cr- paid a crap ton of money. To that, like, but they were I mean? still very good. Like yeah. they, there was like, the, not saying that my friends weren't good, but it was like, you had to know somebody or be connected to somebody. And just, that wasn't a thing. And this is, I would say when I was coming up a little bit, this was right before the era where everyone rapped. You know what I mean? I feel like because it still wasn't as accessible as it is like to become a rapper now, like or even to start a podcast now, or do to become a photographer now. Shout out to Conrad in the building, but um, to do anything now, if you can just you can buy. I would some- normally turn the camera, but I don't want to mess this up. No, you're <laughs> I'll good. turn it later. You're good. Or if, or if you want to get in the shot, feel free to say hi to everybody. My guy Conrad, he's actually like have seen, he's he's actually seen the Daily Note grow, but um. Now, if you want to do anything, you just got to buy some equipment, upload to wherever, and you're good. I mean, you could do it all on your phone if you yeah, really know you what can, you're doing. Like, like, little Tyler, like... I'm literally filming this on an on an old iPhone I paid $50 for you right now. Me? <laughs> like, Lil Tyler uh, re- recorded, like, most of his records off, like, some BandLab app. I mean, Madly made Mad Villainy off a $300 sampler and a, and a Fisher-Price toy record player, like, in a hotel room. So, so I say this to say, like, things weren't as accessible then. But so I was just kind of like, I can honestly say I was just like pretty much like emulating the things I'm seeing. Like, okay, cool. I see these guys posting this. I'm just going to do that for my friends because I wasn't posting like known rappers yet. I was just I was really just posting the homies. So fast forward. Um. Where I, when I started realizing that I had something is when I would like post on Facebook and I would see people comment and then people would start sending me their music. And that's when I was like, OK. I have Pe- something. people were interacting with what you were yeah, putting out people there. were definitely interacting with it like I, I will say I've always been kind of well known I've always had like a decent amount of friends I've always had like my personality today is the same personality that I've had my whole life so like I've always just been really good at like gathering people to just talk about things especially music so once I started getting submissions and starting kind of like you know like getting artists to be like yo I'm dropping this this day like can we premiere it that's when I was like oh I have something like, I have something that's more than just this little blog that I'm doing in my cousin's room. It's just like, okay, like, how do we build from now? So, um, again, freshman, sophomore in high school, not working. Like, my mom doesn't know what the fuck a blog is. My mom still doesn't know what a blog is. And this is. is still leading up to the 2013 yeah. official start. So, this, so like, there's, like, this start, but then there's the official this start. This is the real which start. I, like, which I, all right, so, okay, that's what I, I was just trying to make, a, like, a differentiation between the years. Oh, yeah, this is still, like, years. this is still, like, gathering to 2013. Okay, gotcha, all right. This so, is we're still, still, we're still building we're, up. We're in high school still. Okay. Like, I'm just posting when I can. So, Louis not even around yet. Me and Louis are friends, but he's not even around yet. I brought Louis in because I got grounded. And I needed that. This is where I was like, I'm kind of getting consistent. I'm kind of posting at least once a day. I've, if I'm about to be grounded for six months, like someone needs to hold this thing down. Because, gotcha. you know, like. Wait, were you grounded because you were posting so much? Or was it no, something no, no. Really I, was gra- I, I was grounded because um, I got grounded my sophomore year of high school from like, f- what, what is it? February break in high school? February. I got grounded from February vacation till July 7th. I remember Jeez. this because my birthday is the 8th. My mom took me off punishment the day before my birthday. So I got grounded because I um I got caught smoking and I lost my virginity in like the same week. So my mom was just like, "Yo, you're I don't it's know." It's a hell of a life changing week. You feel? <laughs> yeah, fact. My mom was like, "I don't know what the fuck's going on here, but this ain't that." And then on top of that, I'm living in Georgia at the time. I, when I ca- I, I, I came, I came to Rhode Island for February vacation. I was supposed to stay at my dad's house in Boston. Somehow, some way, I finessed my dad. I just let me go to Rhode Island, and I just stayed at my homie's crib. And I just didn't think to tell my mom, and my mom was tight. So like between the two things I just did plus that, she's like, "Yeah, you're you're out of control." Yeah, she's like, "This is done." Yeah, she's pretty much gonna send me beyond scare straight. That's how she was. She's looking at me because I'm not a bad kid. So like when I was like, she's like, "You're smoking and having sex and just chilling with randoms." Like I don't know what the fuck's going on. So I got grounded. So I'm friends with Louis. Louis, for those who don't know, Louis is like a remarkable writer. Always had like like he does poetry now. 
was rapping at the time as well but like he's always been a phenomenal writer he, i used to, to this day i still send him things that i write just for like just to get like gra- grammatically corrected so i remember being like i don't really trust a lot of people but i trust you could you t- hey take the reins over to keep I'm, the consistency yeah. going because it's in a building stage and we need to yeah, keep yeah i just and it's like again I'm, I'm not getting crazy views or crazy likes but i'm just like to the 12 people who give a shit about this i can't let them down that's really how i felt yep so i remember just giving him my sign in and that's kind of and then he did really well with it and that's and then once i came back and kind of was off punishment i was still keeping up with it in school because i can use computers in school but like i was still keeping up with it and just seeing like the traction of it i was like we have something and then I, I brought Louis on full time. I was just like, we're doing this together. You're like, you're my, you're my, you're my guy. So what led to, or why? Cause I, I find this interesting mm-hmm. with, with whenever I ask these kind of questions mm-hmm. to anybody and everybody on the show, what in your mind, what were the indicators or what determined? Cause we, you know, we were saying that there was the buildup, but then the official start in 2013. So what happened? And maybe this is one of those, you look back on it and then mm-hmm. figured out 2000 or was it in the moment? you figured out, no, this is the official start. Like what were the indicators or what were the things where it's like, Hey, like this is, this is like a thing that like is officially going now. So I want to say like Tumblr was starting to like get to the point where it was like, Tumblr's still alive. It's still alive and kicking. So let me not say dying. I just redesigned my websites, but like uh, the website for this was run off of Tumblr. So people, didn't, people didn't realize it, but it was like, cause it's very easy to get up Tumblr's and running. amazing. I, 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 I owe Tumblr so much, but I, there was a point in time where I realized like, okay, like, Tumblr's not what it was. It's starting to kind of die down. Now this is like 2012, about to go into 2013. Tumblr's starting to kind of slow down. People are starting to like use Twitter way more. Instagram's now now a thing. Like things are just kind of shifting yet again. So I remember just being like, okay, naturally our next step would be get to get a website. That would that was naturally. That was always like kind of in the back of my mind, but I was like, I'm gonna ride this free wave as long as I can because again, high school not working. So um Louis is a year older than me. Louis is about to start college. And Louis is like, yo, I'm about to come into a refund. Like, we're about to have a little extra bread. Like, now's the time. That was it. It was really the fun. Like, it was, Louis got, Louis got like, had like an extra four or $500 to play with. So what, what of that money, like, what did you invest in? Like, besides like getting the domain name and maybe like the hosting space, like, was there anything else with that, that money was put towards like, Hey, we need to get like, we need to buy X, Y, and Z to get this going. We paid Nino for two logos. He made like the original, original daily note logos that were on the original website. We bought the domain. We bought the website. Um, domain website, two logos. I, um, I think we paid for like, I think we paid like the first six months type shit. I think we, cause we were just kind of like, let's gotcha. just, like, yeah, we paid pretty much all that. So I, I mean, like he didn't spend all that money, but I remember he was coming into money. He was like, I can spend this X amount. I don't remember the exact number, but he was just kind of like, I really believe in this. I know you don't work right now. I know like my, my mom, my mom and my uncle were not letting me work. That was just not a thing. Like they were like, you're in high school. You're not working. So I was like, cool. But he was just like, I really believe in this thing. And I know we're going to make it back tenfold. So like Louis was really the person who kind of put his money where the mouth his like money where his mouth was. Is that the term? Yeah. Cool. So he's the one who really He initi- put up the finances. He's like yeah, he initi- this is how much I believe in this. I yeah. have this extra money, I'm gonna use it on this. And again, you know, like he came in awesome just to help me out shit, but he ended up falling in love with writing and I feel like blogging I feel like blogging for the Daily Note is kinda of what like really helped him become a great poet, a great writer, because writing is his job. So I feel like we both kind of fell in love with this thing for different reasons. And um also, at the time, as as I'm about to launch this website, I'm a senior at the Met now. I'm I'm, I'm living back in Rhode Island, and I needed a senior thesis project. Uh, I don't know if are you familiar with the Met High School? I, I know what the Met is. Yeah. So, so like we do a, every uh, every senior has to do a senior thesis project, and it's typically like whatever you're interested in. And I was just I had just tra- I transferred back to Rhode Island from Georgia my senior year. So I go I go I get to this high school and my like senior thesis project. They're like you got to do something, and I'm like. I'm a finesser. I'm always going to finesse my way and to make life easier. I'm like, yo, I'm about to launch this website in a few months anyways. I might as well make my senior thesis project. I might as well make it this whole thing. Yeah. And then obviously like be like, this is the thing I'm passionate about. This is, this is how I can make it, make it the, the care. Probably made the project easier because you're passionate about it. Yeah. And they were like, I remember they were like, well, technically speaking, how's this helping the community? I'm like, I'm helping all the artists in this school have a platform to post their shit. So I was like, cool. So Louis funds it. It's my senior thesis project. It's a bunch. It's a bunch of things at once. Oh, and quick before you go into it, 
who came up with the name Daily Note? Was that an idea? Was that, was that somebody? Was that your friend who said you should blog? What did she come up with the mm, the Daily Note? Me. So, um, at the time, I'm rapping. My name is C Note. Oh, okay. Um, the Daily comes from the Daily Bugle, Spider Man. Gotcha. It was it was like it was that there was never like uh there was never any other extra name. It was that. I remember when I was I was sitting in So there was no iterations, it was no. like, nope, this is the name. This is it. I remember being in my cousin Rio's. I was at my cousin's uh, house Rio. I'm living with him in Atlanta at the time. When his, his he had this like big ass room. We're just chilling. I'm like, yo, I'ma start something. I'm gonna start this blog. I'm working on it, I'm throwing ideas. And um I was just like it was literally like, Well, my name is C Note. We're gonna be posting every day. And I was just like, cool, daily, note. And then somehow, some way, I just thought of randomly Spider-Man because I love Spider-Man. I was like, the Daily Bugle, Daily Note, that's fire. That was it. There was no, there was never a second option. There was, gotcha. I was just like, I like the way that's, I like the way that sounds. And I remember I said it to my aunt, my aunt Sandy's, uh, Mario's mom. I was like, and I was in like backstory. Sandy's just really cool, like um, super into, into the music world. I actually did some like, um, she actually did some, she spoke Portuguese on one of the Outcast albums. So she's like, she's like, immersed in the music world like high key especially in the, from like that older ever or whatever so i remember being like yo what do you think of the daily note and my aunt was like i'll never forget it she's like the daily note that's hot and i was just like yeah you're right that's so, the name so graduating high school mm -hmm. senior project yes sir you got some money you know nah, louis got some money louis got some <laughs> louis money got some money <laughs> louis got some money to finance this this project yep um what were some of those early days of like I guess graduating quote unquote from the Tumblr into like, this is a full website now. Like were there some things that maybe broke or had to be fixed or things you had to do that you didn't expect? Like oh, what were some of those yeah. things? Yeah. Cause this, this is again, and then also driving traffic to a website is, much, is way yeah. different than being on a platform that already has that visitors. That already has followers. Like you, you're like, you're like you don't have that built in no. audience now. So like you're out, you're, you're kind of out in the way. So it's like, okay, now we have to like get people to come here. Hell yeah, there was so much learning and it's like it's not not like so now we now our website's through Squarespace and Squarespace is like for those who want to make a website, Squarespace in my opinion is like the best place to go through. They have a YouTube for a fucking how to do everything. Right? It wasn't like that in 2012, 2013. We were going off Weebly. I don't even know if Weebly's still around, but if so, I think they are by I know what you're So I'm going off Weebly and this is like a much more complicated Tumblr and it's like we're learning as we go and it's we're learning as we go and it's like for whatever reason, we just decided to, to launch our website on a very specific date. Oh, we we were going to announce it on a specific date because it had to be for my senior thesis project. And there was no, like, vision board. There was no whiteboard of how we we're going to do it. We were like, like, we got our logo done the night before we were supposed to premiere. That's how last minute everything was going. We were just scrambling and figuring shit out as so we went. So you work well under pressure would be an understatement. Absolutely. No, like, <laughs> Louie and I definitely work super well under pressure. As we've gotten a little more seasoned in what we do, we've definitely, like have like a method to our madness but like at this time we're just doing everything ourselves and just figuring it out so it's like yo shout out to nino we got our we got he did literally did our logo the night before super cheap super quick fire though um uh learning how to design the website we did that ourselves uh because this is like again a little bit pre-templates pre-themes there was themes where they were trash and i had like i've always like, kind of had a vision of what i wanted to look yeah, like you didn't have like the kind of like the drag and drop like editing nah. of like a square space that you do now like no, that didn't exist hell back then no it was like super complicated super slow like you just had to figure out as you went and like honestly the like first year of the daily note was just like every month like the theme look would look a, like slightly different because we would learn some shit we'd be like oh if you drag it like this you can add this there or this is how you can put an ad there like we were learning as we went and just and it's just two kids one a freshman in, in, in college and a senior in high school just figuring it out there was a, there was no there's nothing there was just us just figuring shit out for for like still again still paying attention to the, the bigger blogs and seeing how they do it and what they do and how to, how they utilize social media I, one thing i will say i've always been decent at social media but the website shit oh my god it was so hard that actually leads me perfectly to my next question which is so you're figuring out the logistics and the background work mm -hmm. of just like running and maintaining a website and posting consistently mm -hmm. to it which good to figure out but then there's the other side of like, okay, how do I get traffic? Like, how do I get people to come here? So what were in the early stages of mm -hmm. the Daily Note website itself, um, you know, and social media kind of be in its like beginning stages, what were some of the tactics or strategies or things you tried to do to get people to come to the site? So 
originally, like I mentioned, they didn't know something for the homies. Eventually, like kind of towards the tail end of the Tumblr run, but going into the website run, we finally decided like, okay, we're going to have to post other people because our friends aren't dropping every day. Our friends are, you know what I mean? Our friends aren't making music every day. They're not, they don't have the bandwidth to drop every Friday like a Kanye West. You know what I mean? They don't have the bandwidth to drop um, videos all the time. Because again, like if I'm in high school, my homies are also in high school, about to be college in college. So I remember making the decision to be like, talking to Louie and being like, yo, I think we should start posting like the bigger guys. Like the bigger guys that we like though. This isn't going to be the blog where we post fucking everything. It's going to be shit that I like. Like we should, I remember the first major project we dropped on the Daily Note, well, that we posted on the Daily Note was Acid Rap. I remember that vividly because it's the first thing we, we posted, the double XL freshman cover situation. I'm sorry, yeah, we posted a double XL cover and then Louie posted Acid Rap. And I remember the traction from that was decent. I don't think Chance retweeted it or anything, but I think like someone in his team did and like we were like, this needs to be a thing. Like we need to just be posting the people that we like and that's how we're going to build, build more traction. And like just the marketing was like posting on Twitter, tag them, hope they retweet. That hasn't changed though. That's still kind of like most blogs like things like we're going to make shit look cool and hopefully set artist sees it and they appreciate it. And sometimes that r goes into a follow, whatever, whatever. But we made the decision to be like, it just can't be the homies because if it's just the homies, especially where we're at now, as, it's I mean, too insular. I, There's not going to be enough to consistently. Exactly. And it's just like not everyone gives a fuck about just local hip hop. Like, unfortunately, like yeah. we do. But like, you know, like there's so many different things to it. And it's just like at the time, st we're still in the we're still knee deep into the blog era. So it's like at, this is 2013. Rocky's dropping his debut. Bronson had just come out. I was a huge Bronson fan. Um, Chance is coming. Up. And also just from like a local music perspective, the scene back then is completely different than what it oh, is. Oh, hell yeah. Like, like, I, I, think, I think that's another po uh, point to, to make as well. Hell yeah. I think now if someone wants to have a website of strictly just like Rhode Island rap, and I'm pretty sure there's a there's a bunch like of like Rhode Island rap and R and B and like yeah, Rhode Island like music. Rhode Island music, you could absolutely you do that. You could fill it with content every day. Hell yeah, because there's so many artists. But remember, this is like still 2013 is not that far away. I, I was that gonna old. say like this is like a weird time. Like it's like the post C and J era almost. Yeah, because C and J had like had. I mean, and re rest in peace to C and J, and you know, rest in peace to C R the Beast. Like Facts. Huge rest in peace, me. legend. You know, like um, but like. So yeah, the Beast did a uh, logo for me too. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah he was doing logos for yeah, a while. Man. Um, but like it was rest the, in peace. It was the po re yeah rest in, rest in peace to like every everybody and anybody involved, and Facts. especially to C R the Beast. But like, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm getting my time frames mixed up, but I feel like it was post that because there was like that and unity and like and like those kind of things happening. But it was on the down of that, mm -hmm. and then there's kind of like when one when one thing comes up. And it starts going downhill. There's like a little bit of time before the next thing comes. So mm -hmm. I've so correct me if I'm wrong, but it was like almost like in Providence, it was like transition point. Absolutely. Of like one era was like on its way out, and then the new guys are coming. And then the new guys are coming in, but they're not at the top yet. So there's this kind of like weird gray area waiting period. And feel free to correct me, but no, I you're, like, like and keep in at mind, that time, like that's what local music was happening. But it was like it was going it was going down and then coming up at the same time. So we're kind of in this dip. And keep in mind too. A lot of the time I'm, I'm, I'm running the Daily Note, I'm not living in Rhode Island. So I'm not able to like really be around a lot of these artists that I, whose music that I like. Because your time split between Atlanta and Because I'm living in Atlanta, exactly. So it's like, I'm not going to lie to you, a lot of the beginning of the Daily Note, a lot of the Daily Note now even still is like more kind of Georgia artist based because I was just seeing these guys more and like Georgia has a lot more artists. So I wasn't, there's a lot of, there's a lot of like some of the OGs that were a little bit before me that I never really got a chance to like meet or get to like. I didn't meet Cam, like Cam Bell's like, Cam Bell's had the streets on Smash, like, pretty much f during my whole time of the day, you know, but I didn't, I didn't meet him, therefore, like, he's not someone I was covering. I didn't meet him until, like, college. Right. I say that to say, like, there's a lot of artists I missed out on because not living in Rhode Island. <clears throat> and, um, fuck, wh where am I taking this? But yeah, like I said to say, like, um, I missed out on a lot of the artists here because I wasn't living here or, like, getting to know them, so it's like, it probably, it probably could have stayed just all local things if, I, if that made a thing but i wanted to you know take it there and i do feel like to your point i feel like there was definitely a shift because there was a lot of new just new energy coming out i feel like the thing i love about providence is you can feel with the energy shifting and there was definitely a shift i feel in like we're era. living in that right now oh hell energy yeah shift. <laughs> no super we definitely are i feel like some like one of like one of my homies called me like og the other day i'm only 28 but like 
the uh, like I'm 37 and now I feel ancient. Thanks. Nah, but like <laughs> it's true because he what he said to me, he was just like, I remember like what he said, like I've been following the Daily Note since I was in like middle school. I'm like, holy shit, this kid's like a freshman in college now. But I say that to say like we were the new energy at one point, and I remember it, it was just figuring it out, and it's just so dope to see like what it is now, where it just like they're. I wish I could remember the page. There's a page here that's like strictly Rhode Island music, and I love that page. Fuck, I wish I could remember the name of it. Oh, it's gonna piss me off. But it's like to see that and just see where Rhode Island, the scene is now. Just see where the scene is. New England is crazy. We didn't have a cousin Stiz, and it when, when, yeah, like, when I, I think there was always know, things here, but like it wasn't. This. There's 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 different like t- like every era or every time period has its own things going on, and like the one we're living in now just seems like the energy shift is a bit. Um, it's it's different than what we've experienced before. I mean, every but everything seen as new energy. Um, but speaking of new energy, because mm-hmm. some when a business needs new energy, aka cash flow. Yeah. What was the first for like just the daily note? Because then I'm going to talk get into the expansion part Absolutely. after that. But um, when was the first time where like daily note as an entity made money, and what was that like? Whew. Where it's like, oh crap! Like this thing generated profit. Um, I want to say, hmm, that's a great question. I I, I want to be like factual about it. I want to say the first thing I ever made money off of the Daily Note is when I made t-shirts my freshman year of college. I had a homie who had a printer, so he made me some like super cheap shirts. I sold them for 15 bucks. We made like 20, we sold out. And they were just like the original logo, just on a t-shirt. Very, very shitty quality. But yeah, we dropped them. I remember like, this is how like new to it I was that we didn't drop them on our website. It was just like, yo, you're in Rhode Island. Pull up on a kid. I'm at Rick. You know what I mean? Like not even a pop up. Just hit me up. Shopify was not a thing yet. It might have been a thing. I just didn't know. Or or maybe not as ubiquitous as it is now. It wasn't there. There wasn't like a it wasn't like how I can just go on Squarespace and just make a shop and put it up and blah, blah, blah. It wasn't. You couldn't drop ship back then. Yeah, Yeah, it was. It was not. And again, like. I just wasn't thinking that far. Like a lot of the times, like the beauty I tell anyone that's starting something new for the first time. Enjoy the first few years of it because it's like you get to do so much trial and error. And like the first few years of the Daily Note, the first like six years of the Daily Note was a lot of trial and error. Let's just put this out and see what it does. Let's just do this event, see what it does. But like for our first time, make money was these shirts. Um, I think I did like hoodies a little bit after. My homie Will Naylor, shout out to Will Naylor, was like the first person to just be like, yo, I got some extra bread. I'm going to invest. And, and just to make hoodies, like high quality hoodies. I saw quick the t-shirt sold out. And we made these really we made these um just with the original logo, just the daily note, and shit's f- sold quickly. So that's when I realized like, oh, like this can this can make decent bread. You know what I mean? And again, in college, so it's like hundred dollars is life changing money. I don't care what anyone says. Like as a freshman in college, like making a few hundred dollars off an idea that like making any money off an idea, I think you is fucking even, phenomenal. Even, even if you, even, or even if you just break even at zero, the fact yeah. that you go in debt, like to, at least to me, is like well, you did something right. You broke even. No least. facts, and to be making money off something that like these aren't like they just said the daily note. Like yeah. they wasn't these weren't really, like crazy cool designs or like crazy dope graphic tees that I'm making now. They just said it was just my logo. So for people to like this thing enough or even to fuck with me but enough, they to, wanted to put it on their chest. You literally, feel me? <laughs> and there's still people to this day who have like these OG hoodies because like like. Me and Naylor, I remember, like we really cared about the quality of it. So those were the first times we made money off it. First time making money off an event was doing a pop up at Trade Pop Up. We um, this is at this time I'm interning for Stay Silent. I'm interning, I'm interning for them before like they're even Stay Silent. They're like at the time I think the Beautiful Silence. I think I was I, about to say like was it I, what, what time period was it? Because it was right, different names. It was right as they transitioned. I remember being in the meeting with them as they were doing the rebrand. And um, I was interning for them and uh, stay uh, stay silent and trade pop up. And my first time doing a pop up was at trade pop up. Our first two events were trade pop up. We did the daily note pop up, which is fire. We had like really dope gold pins. We had some hoodies. We had some hat. We had some dad hats. And bro, we killed it. And then that same week, we did our first ever dope concepts at Avenue Concepts. For those who don't know, dope concepts. The name comes from Avenue Concepts. Okay, the Avenue Concept, yeah. um, like Artist Collective, I think. Is yeah, that they what have that is? A, um on Lockwood. They have a, um a building is beautiful oh, okay. in there. They sell like uh 
you can do graffiti there like legally they sell like spray spray cans um and they have like a, they have a really dope inside venue in and outside i'm not entirely sure if they're still open because like things are ever changing yeah, because like, i know they've done a lot of the art installations yeah they around, do around they do, downtown like, Providence. Is, the, is a lot of them are done by the avenue concepts yeah so shout out to avenue concepts because they were like the first venue outside of like fucking with the stay silent people to be like oh yeah you want to throw a hip-hop show in our venue sure we won't charge you anything and you can charge whatever and we'll just go from there they were just kind of like we just want to get people in here type shit and i'm just like young and wide-eyed and just like all right cool and that we did our first two events the same week so i was going to save this question for later but i think it's important to ask now just mm-hmm. with the, t- the timing of what you're saying absolutely um so you're talking about Stay silent. Mm-hmm. Another episode. Everybody should go. I want to keep cross promoting episodes. As you it's, it's gonna it's gonna get annoying, folks. Like, but uh, Jay and Sabrina stay silent episode again. Go listen to that after this one. That was the big homies. Um, but uh, so speaking of that, because this is a question I was gonna ask later, mm-hmm. but I want to ask it now. I think for a lot of people, um, there's a question of like there are certain jobs or certain internships mm-hmm. where they're just not posting on a job board. Mm-hmm. Like let's 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 be honest. Mm-hmm. And I think for a lot, especially anybody who's listening to this who are younger, or if, if you are older and you're trying to transition into a different career path, I think there's a question of, and I want to get your opinion on this, how does one get involved? And what I mean by that is like to intern for Jay and Sabrina during the building, like, you know, the building of the stay silent that we know and love today. Yeah. Right. Like, how did that happen? Or like, I've, I've known you from some of the other jobs you worked where you worked at Bad Taste mm-hmm. you were, and you were, then you ended up working for um, Cured Collection. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, again, uh, the Longston Bad Taste episode. Go listen to that. Go listen to the Sudi episode both, afterwards. Both, epi- uh, both episodes are very good. Um, appreciate that. Of course. Uh, I think the Sudi's episode is like the, the episode that really got me hip to your podcast. Uh, I've been seeing that. it, but like, you know, I think Sudi's like, before I just interrupt you, I think Sudi's like, the most incredible human being, and I, I fucking loved. Yeah, no, he's an amazing her. guy. That's and, he, and he's super like I know you because of Sudi. Like, um, because I, I remember you used to come to Cured a lot. I'd see you at Bad Taste more, but like Cured is when I started to talk to you. But Sudi's like one of the most fascinating people. So like listening to that podcast was dope because I don't think people understand how like intelligent he is and just like how like how I, hip like how much knowledge he has on fashion and just close period. Well, that's that's why I love going in there and talking to him. Like just a brief aside because. You know, there's like the streetwear and then there's like the hype stuff. Facts. But then I would come in there and be like, yo, I really like the soft net piece or do you have anything by engineered garments? And his eyes would light up because he'd be like, yeah, you're one of the few people yeah, that no, ask for that. And he's like, and he was like happy to like show it to me. Before we even knew your name, I remember I'd be like, oh, the dude that's super into obscure brands came in. Yeah, like, oh, that guy. The yeah, guy, I, cause obscure I'm, brand Jesus came in. No, fa- I swear to you, because like, like you, you come in, I swear to God, he'd come in. And like you'd be like, oh, Sudi here, blah, blah blah. Like he'd be buying like, like I remember you bought like some some piece from Cured. Uh, I think we were still in the arcade, but it was like a it was like a party. It was like a Bape tea, but it was like a party joint. It was like Bape and a bunch of other brands. Some like super incredibly obscure T-shirt that was wild priced. But like I remember Sudi was like the right person is gonna buy this, and it was you. And I remember just being like, yeah, he's always coming in here and buying like super cool obscure pieces. And it's like that's what we did it for. But I say that to say like Sudi's just like I love Sudi, bro. I love that's that Sudi and interning for Stay Silent were both life changing things for me. So, and I'm glad you said all that, mm-hmm. you know, and like and me meeting you at Bad Taste. How does somebody like I'm a, sorry, a younger, I didn't no, 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 this is actually perfect. I'm glad you went into that uh, kind of like side, like that parking lot, yeah, um, from a conversational standpoint, because I think it further reinforces the question I want to ask, which is how is somebody younger, like, how did they get involved, or like, what advice would you say to get involved? Because not everybody's outgoing like you. There are some sure. people that are introverted. There are some people who are just shy. There are some people who mm-hmm. maybe they see a Suri or they see a Jay and Sabrina mm-hmm. or they see you and maybe if they're younger, they're intimidated or maybe they just don't know, like, should I reach out to on social media? Would it be weird to talk? How does, like, how did you get involved with these people to get these kind of internships and jobs? And what advice would you give for somebody who wants to get involved, but maybe they're just inexperienced or young, or maybe they, maybe they don't feel like they're cool enough? You know what I yeah, mean? Like, no, I get there's it. a lot of like the internal doubt too. So, what advice would you give, and how did you get involved with these people to get these kinds of jobs? So, I met Sudi through Stay Silent. Um, so how I got involved with with Jay and Sabrina? Um, I want to say I just kind of started going to like the Trey Pop Up events. I met Cam. I met Cam, Drew, Sabrina. And Jay, like literally, like a week after week after week, in a su- it was like it was, it was the summer where I started doing like uh, it was, I think it was the summer uh going into college, 
or maybe this summer going into my sophomore year. I forget. I forget the timelines. But I remember. No, no, no. It was the summer going into my sophomore year. I met Cam. Cam's the first person I met. I met him at my homie Latif's event. For those who don't know, Latif is like had the party scene on Smash. Latif's actually the first person to let me vent at an event. Shout out to Latif. I owe him a lot. Um, I met Cam there. And Cam was like one of the first rappers to be like, oh, I know who you are. You're Cooge. Like, and I was just like, yo, what? And like, for those who have never met Cam, Cam is like Mr. Rhode Island. He'll know like everything about you. He'll know who your who your folks are, what school you are. Like, he just knows everything about everybody. So I remember being like, oh, that's wild, impressive. And I fi- come to find out he's an incredible rapper. Next week, I meet Drew. Um, I met Drew randomly at some pop up, bought some vintage stuff off him, followed his brand, thought the shit was dope. Week after. He's about to drop uh, his own brand. Drew by yeah. Drew. Yeah, which yes, is going to be sir. happening at, at, at Cure Collection, bringing it full circle, everybody. Oh, I didn't even realize. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, no, the pop-up's happening at Oh, Cure. that's fucking fire. Wow, like, what a, what a time. So, meet Drew, loved, loved his work. I follow Bar. I was like, this is dope. I, like, I was just out going outside a bit more. I was finally living in Rhode Island, finally, like, working a little bit. I had money to, like, start going to these things. I'm old enough to go. Because I'm old, like, um, because remember, like, all these, all these guys I'm naming are like six, seven years older than me. So they know my older brother. That's, and I think that's, I kind of got lucky because my older brother knows all these people. Like Sabrina and Jay and like all these guys. Are like I want to say they're like great friends, but they all know each other. So everyone knows me as Stefan's little brother. So I say it to say, I started meeting all these guys. And I remember meeting Nasty. And he was just like, oh, I've been seeing like your blog on the internet. Like I thought, I fuck with what you, what you got going on. And like I was going to kind of get a hit to what they got going on because I was too young to be going to like their events. So my first time going to trade pop-up, Hill Holla had a pop-up. He had the Simpsons pop-up when he dropped, like, all the dope Bart Simpson merch. And I remember walking into trade pop-up. Everyone was in there was super fly, super nice. The music was dope. Like, listening to, like, album cuts off NERD albums and shit. And I remember being like, this is for me. Like, I feel seen. Like, a place like this, I can't believe I've never been to something like this. And that was my immediate introduction to like fucking with them all the time and going to all their events. And I've always, I'm just wild inquisitive, so I feel like I would just always talk to them, ask them questions, kind of ask them like how they do things. Because I one thing about me, like even at this the age of 28, like I have no issue doing an internship. I have no issue asking questions. I've like I'm relatively inquisitive, and I have no issue like being like, "Yo, you have a show? Can I host for free?" Like I that's just how I am. Like if I, I if I want to do some shit, I'll get I'll I'll force myself to get involved. And I feel like from there, they just I think they just appreciated the spirit. And they were like, and I'm in college at the time. They were like, me and Bertles were their first interns. So I think it just kind of went from me being like this wide-eyed, excited 18, 19-year-old who's like super into dope shit, kind of has his own thing. And honestly, I never realized what I had until I started like doing more events. And I feel like they helped me realize that I had something special low-key. But yeah, no, just kind of being around them, just going to their events, talking to them a bit more, getting to know them. They kind of offer me the internship. And that's really where like I start to learn the tricks of the trade. Funny because I entered that trade. But um, yeah, just being outside. I would say I tell anyone who has anything, if you have a brand, if you make music, if you do photography, like best thing I told Conrad to do, bro, go outside with your camera. Like go outside. The internet's cool. You can have all the followers in the like, world. Like, just start getting immersed in it. Yeah, go outside. Like, for real. Like, go outside. Talk to the other cool people in your city. Go to the cool events. Not on some, like, not on some like weirdo shit. Like, go on some, like, I'm trying to get to know people. The more people see your face, the more they'll attach it to whatever it is that you're doing. And that, that was my best advice. Like, I was finally old enough to just be like, cool. I can go to these events. I have the money to, to, to pay the $10 fee to get inside. I'm working finally. So I think it, for me, it was going outside. Going outside, talking to people, and just really being a fan of things. Like, once I like something, I become a fan. I have no issue being like, I like this, I'm sharing it, blah, blah, blah. And so I think it was just a natural thing of just, like, people finally being like, oh, this is a kid that runs that thing that I see from time to time. So how did you transition from running the blog, mm-hmm. right, Especially during the blog. By the way, era. I'm sorry. I feel like I don't answer your questions full, fully. No, no, I'm no, like remembering in real time. No, no I mean, you, you definitely are. And it's, and it's going in different segues. But that's kind of the, at least for me, the beauty of this show is that I'll have questions. Mm-hmm. But then I kind of like want to jump around when a certain, when a certain like fact or it's certain. the beauty of podcasts. Ge- yeah, a certain gem gets dropped. I'm kind of like, oh, this is a perfect segue into this other question mm-hmm. rather than just going down the line. Um, so a question of you're running the blog and and you know, it's going well. Mm-hmm. People that you appreciate, appreciate the blog and what you're mm-hmm. doing. What goes into the decision of, we got this blog, we're running it. Mm-hmm. Now let's do radio. 
So I'm a sophomore in college, and I went to Rick. I went to Rhode Island College. Wow, I'm so happy you asked about uh, uh, college radio because f- I loved doing radio. So I'm a sophomore in college. Um, I'm not. I never been the the guy at school that was super into the things. Like I don't. I don't go to the games. Like even high school, I, I wasn't. I didn't have school spirit. That was never my thing. I didn't go. I to mean, me. don't feel bad. I was never that guy either. So you feel me? Yeah. So, I'm like. I'm like. I don't want to be here at all. Exactly. But I don't I'm, like any of you. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like. At the same time, I'm also like I'm really friendly, so like I was friends with people and shit. But um, I said to say, so I'm going to Rick. I'm living on campus. There's a to to pass Donovan, which is like the food hall, and to get to your classes, you pass WXIN, which is the radio station on campus. And every time I pass, I'm like, yo, why are they playing this bullshit? Yeah, it's like it's a radio that I can't even listen to. Yeah, I'm and, like, what and, is I, this? and I'm stuck here. <laughs> and it's just like, I can, yeah, it's like, and it wasn't just like not even because they weren't playing hip hop; they were just playing bullshit all the time. So I remember, like, again, kind of how the Daily Note is. I remember just complaining about it one day at Donovan, and my best friend Mags was just kind of like, so why don't you do radio since you're complaining? So basically— Most and, most great ideas come from the fact that I just complain. That you complain, and then one of your friends tells you, tells you like, why don't you just try this or do this? But, like, no, most great ideas come from the fact of, like, there's not this thing happening it so happening well, so I, let me make it i get it hence the whole reason why this show even exists you, feel um, me? you know so <laughs> there, it, it, i'm not trying to interrupt I, no I you're just, good you're good it brings up an interesting point though i wonder and i don't know if this is maybe um not not preliminary and subliminal i think the water's right near you oh yeah man um i think it go it goes to like do you think that sometimes not even just you personally but in general like people who have ideas need the validation from either like somebody else or a yeah. friend to see if that idea is like got traction. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, I would say so. I definitely, I definitely would say so. I think that's, that's, well, that's why it's imp- important to have like support systems and like Around pe- you. Gotcha. And people you can bounce ideas off. Cause like I can tell you how many times I've said an idea just on some like, Oh, I think I should do this. And then like whoever I'm with is like, Bro, that'd be crazy. Like, and wow. Like, oh, wait, we should talk about oh, this you now. Think, yeah. Oh, you think so? Cool. <laughs> like, oh, like, because honestly, most of the things that I've done, whether it be Poetry Night, whether it be the dope concept shows, whether it be like the merch I make, whether, pretty much almost thing, everything that I do is typically for me. Like, my one goal when starting the Daily Note was I want to throw one rap show with the homies and not have a 70, 700 openers, not have people pay to perform, just the homies headlined by the homies, hosted by the homies. That was my one goal. And then that turned into all of this. All of this. So, But th- but my, the reason I wanted to do that, because it was like, there wasn't that. Yeah, like, wh- where's this thing that I like? Yeah, Everybody like, else has got the thing that they like, where's the thing that's, that's for me? So everything that I've ever kind of been a part of was just kind of like, I want this for me. I want people, when people come to my events, I want them to get that, have that initial feeling that I had when I walked into Trade Pop-Up for the first time. I don't think I've ever said that out loud. So I like I like if Jay and Sabrina are listening like and Andrew because he, he he had the um, he owned trade as well. That feeling is something I want to emulate for people all the time. I mean I I'll I'll agree with that in the sense of like all the things we were just talking about before mm-hmm. like seeing bad taste and being like oh like this is something I could get into or like curate collection and be like hey I can mention an obscure brand and and not know you there's know there's someone else in and, the city. and somebody else like actually knows it and it's not gonna look at me like I have 10 you know like 10 heads coming out of me and then same with you know trade and the stay silent yeah. parties and just being like oh this is something I vibe to even bad taste because you know bad taste came a few years before cured I remember my first time stumbling in, into bad taste um Shout out to Longston. Shout out to Longston. Yeah. Longston is, I, I worked with Longston for a very long time. And that's my guy. And uh, s- similar to Sabrina, similar to Sudi, I learned a lot working with him, especially in the creative world. He's one of the fir- few people who, are, like, who just works well in chaos and is a trial and error guy too. I would see him put out a design. Oh, it didn't do well? We can do some other shit. Like, and just figure it out and do new shit all the time. Longston is one of the most creative people I know and he's always doing something new. So this desire of like, hey, there's not this thing for me, so I'm gonna go create it. Is that that's the desire that pushed you into like getting on radio? And I'm assuming, the, the yeah. Radio? So okay. hell yeah. So boom, back to the radio thing. Um, but they're like, yeah, if you don't, if you hate it, do your own radio thing. And like, secretly, I've always kind of wanted to do radio. Like, I was always like in high school, I was always listening to iHeart in my headphones, listening to the Breakfast Club, driving to school. And I've always loved radio. I've always loved the idea of just being able to talk about music, play it, and be like. This is dope, or this is trash, whatever the case may so be. So the initial idea was to do a format like The Breakfast Club, where it's going to be like <laughs> news and music, or no? So the original idea for the thing w- w- was, I just want to play really good music on college campus. I want people to walk through, Rick, hear their favorite whatever song at the time, their favorite 
Rick Ross record and be like, I'm excited to go to class now. And, and also think about it, like the Stretch and Bobbito show mm -hmm. started as a New York college radio show at like two or three in the morning and it broke artists, you know, a couple of artists that you may know, like Nas, yeah. Jay-Z, Biggie, was, Big L. Clan, Big me? L from a college radio show and it's like at, at two in the morning. And it's just like again, it's just like I wanted to be the the guy that's playing dope music. I want to be the no, the guy known at Rick for playing the cool music. Like who's playing this? How did this guy find a clean version of this Ty Dolla Sign Dom Kennedy record? Like you know what I mean? That like because I, I was playing some shit. Like I I was playing some shit. So um I started it and I just fell in love with it, bro. I I immediately I remember my first episode. I think I had uh, Y Try on. Uh, it was me and Y Try interviewed my homie. He wasn't even rapping at the time. Uh, he had like a clothing line and I remember just being like, yo, just come on the radio with me. I'm going to play some joints. I'll, we'll, we'll talk for a few minutes. And I just immediately was like, oh, I got something. I got something. And it was really popular and I really enjoyed it. I got fired, though. What did you do to get fired? Um, you don't mind me asking. No, I got you. I have no, I have no issue. Um, I have no issue. I think me. it's so funny because your photographer is over here laughing. So I'm wondering like what the, the nah, story so, is now. Um, <laughs> you, you remember how I mentioned like I'm just not school oriented, like school, like I have no school spirit. I was like, I had like one of the most popular shows on campus. I would like to say the most popular, but I'll sound biased. So let's just say I had a very popular show. But like I was not involved with WXIN at all. I didn't go to none of their, they had like meetings like every Wednesday. I never went to them shits. I never promoted their shits. I was just like, um, hip hop got because they they they're like a rock radio. We had nothing in common. They never wanted to to fuck with the shit I had going on. So I was like, I'm not fucking with their shit. So I never went to their meetings and I did not follow rules. I think the rules you can only have like three people. I had all the homies in there. I had like two camera guys. Like I've always was good at assembling people. Like yo, you got a camera, pull up. We are gonna make this shit look as dope as possible. We're gonna right. drop these videos. Oh, you're not gonna let me keep the audio? Fuck it, I'm gonna record the audio myself. Oh, you, I can only have two guests. Nah, my homies is coming seven deep. And we feel me and that bitch wildin'. Okay, like, this reminds me of like Wu Tang running up into you the, feel me? The, the Stretch and Bobbito show, being like, no, we're gonna do it this way. We don't care. Yeah, because it's like at the end of the day, like I'm a respectful person, but I'm from the, the I'm from I love hip hop, so I don't give a fuck about none of the rules you got going on. And it's like I understand like upon review why they had these rules, like you shouldn't have water near in the studio because of that. But like, nah, I'm talking for two straight hours. I need me I need water. Like little things like that. So I feel like Due to the fact that I just didn't kiss ass and I unapologetically just had a really cool show and I was myself and it didn't have to like interact with anybody, they were just kind of like fuck that. So I got a warning. I'm sorry, I never got a warning because I didn't go to meetings. One day I came, I came in and they were like, "Yeah, we got to pull your show," and I fucking spazzed. So they put my show back on, then they pull it again. Now what? So like after that, it was, it was fuck WXIN. Like till this day, fuck the niggas. I would agree with that. Yeah, for uh, sure. On, on knowing this information, but like upon review, I was wild, and I guess I, I guess I, I guess I could have like followed rules. Well, my my question is, did that? And I could be mixing my stuff up because there's a lot of Providence history that's mm -hmm. jumbled in my brain. Um, did that lead to you moving the radio show at the building that's above? I think it's like or the thing that's above Ego or where? Because I know there's like a radio station that was out of there. Was no, that no, where no. You guys I, were I never, out of, or? I never, I never did. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. That's um, that's Ruckus' studio. Okay, all right. No, this no, is no, why no, I, I mix no, stuff no, up sometimes. No, no, no you're good. You're no, you're. That's how I know you know what the fuck you're talking about. Nah, I never did work at Ruckus' studio. Shout out to them though. I like. I, I've always liked what they got going on. Um, nah, man, this me getting fired was one of the best things that could happen because it leads to my relationship with Bo8 Studios. So okay, that, that was and that because that's where I was gonna ask like if if I was thinking like you went to that studio and then mm -hmm. you led to this studio. All right, so that led to the studio that you're using now for mm -hmm. X amount of things. Yeah, okay. so I ended up I had met um, anytime in um, notes through Spaka actually Spaka you know Spaka was doing a lot of shows. Shout out to Spaka shout some uh, on his episode uh, that you should go check out. <laughs> nah, shout out to Spaka man. He actually gave me one of my first hosting opportunities. That's my guy. Love, 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 Spocka. But um, I met the BOA Studios guys, and I remember one of them just kind of hit me up, and they were like, yo, because I'm not going to hold you. When my shit got fired, I was on Twitter wilding. Awesome. Like, I was like, yo, tell WXN suck my dick. Like, I was wilding, bro. So, like, nah, like, for real. And it's still, I'm still in that energy. Like, I'm going to get rich and buy that building, I'm telling you. But um, I remember they Put reached my name on it. <laughs> you feel me? I remember they reached out, and they were like, they were building BO8s. They were, like, transitioning from their old studio which to like which would now be their current studio they've been in the studio for a while and i remember they were just kind of like yo we really like your energy we really like what the fuck you got going on like have you ever thought of like maybe 
doing your own shit and i was like what do you mean like how, how could i do radio on my own that doesn't even make sense like this is like right as podcasting is about to be the thing yeah you feel me yep. like i like i could be wrong but i want to say i'm probably one of the first few people from rhode island to have a podcast because i somehow found niggas who were like yeah we're, we have the equipment let's do the thing or whatever. I wasn't even calling it a podcast. I was calling it, it was still like online radio. Yeah, yeah it's like internet radio. Even yeah, though, it was like even internet it, radio. Like we did like the term because like there's internet streaming radio, but what they had then versus now, like because I remember using like a real audio player to like stream certain internet radio shows and stuff like that. Yeah, no worries. But like, you know what I mean? But yeah, like like from what we had now to like be having a podcast on Spotify yeah. and how easy it is to put out podcasts yeah, is completely it, different. It wasn't that. I remember I was going live on like Facebook Live and like maybe YouTube and just still like treating it like radio, but it was still a podcast because I could swear now. I could talk about whatever the fuck I wanted and there was really no time limits. It was like, I was kind of doing it. The show ended own. whenever you wanted it to. Yeah, it ended when BO8 was like, all right, Kuz, you're wildin'. But um, so I ended up meeting the BO8 Studios people and very similar to like, my relationship will stay silent, very similar to my relationship with Sudi, very relationship to the Longston thing. I will be await studios so much because they really just were like, I like what you're doing. We're going to allow you to record here. We're, th we're gonna, This is going to be your price. It was like damn near free. Like it was it was so cheap. And we're going we're gonna to work with your budget. And we already have an in-house team. And me, I just ended up becoming great friends with all these people. Like so much so. We, we've done a lot of ama amazing things together. And um, through the BO8's relationship, I end up, like, A1, who does all my um, flyers, came from BO8. You know what I mean? Like, that relationship stemmed from there. We've been working together officially for, like, 11 years. Like, all my flyers come from the same guy. Um, So BO8's, they were just like, yo, I see you got fired. Come over here. We'll do the thing. And it just finally, it became where I was like, all right, cool. Now I'm interviewing everybody. There's no rules. We can do whatever we want. We can smoke. Ah, 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 whatever the fuck maybe. We can do that here. And yeah, that's the me getting fired from WXIM was one of the best things ever because I don't think I meet BOA Studios without that happening. I don't think I start podcasting without that happening. So even though it sucked that I got fired because I loved this thing, I ended up being like, okay, now I can own this thing. And that, and that, that was like one of my first examples of being like, not nah, fuck working for people. Like unless like unless it's like somewhere that you really believe in, fuck working for people or doing things for people when I could just own the shit. I can own my audio. They weren't giving me my audio, which is crazy upon review. Like, looking back and being like, what do you mean I can't have my, my radio? Yeah. Like, I can't have my audio. Why? Because cause it's, I think, the, I mean, if you're talking about the college, they're probably like, well, it's our equipment, our thing. No, I get we it. Own, we, we own it, which I'm not even full agreement either. But that statement you just made about working for other people, a brief side question, because I think this is something important to bring up, um, especially now, I think, with the idea of like, you know, I'm going to work for myself. And you see all these like entrepreneur grind mm -hmm. accounts on YouTube, which I, I could fill four hours of my personal opinion on that stuff. And the way you're laughing, I think you know where my opinion's going to go. But I think the idea of like, I'm not going to work for everybody, dot, dot, dot. However, and this is not a argumentative question. This is more of, no, of I, course. I, I think more of a- Because like it's a, impossible not to work for an, people. An, an, an informational well, teaching question. but- um, I mean, cause I, I would say Dame Dash would be like, I never had a job, but that's a whole, again, a whole other avenue to go down. I think sometimes people like, especially like a younger person coming up now, it's like, why would I work for anybody? I can do all these things. I can flip, blah, blah, blah. But is there a value of like working for other people in that you can learn some things yeah. just from like, even if it's something that's not adjacent to what you're doing, like I get, I, I could get somebody could make the argument like, well, you were working for this clothing person. You but like, what were some of the things that you learned working for other people or with, or just working these other jobs, like working for Suri at Cure Collection, working for Longston at, you know, um, oh, at Taste, working for James, because I think there's some value there that I think sometimes gets lost when you're younger. Like, oh, I'm not going to work for anybody else. And it's mm -hmm. just like, yeah, but you can maybe gain some skills or gain oh, some ideas that you can then take later on and use it to your advantage. So first and foremost, when I say fuck working for people, I don't obviously I don't mean that I have a job and I work for people and I've worked with people. I say I'm more or less like fuck working for people who don't really understand the vision, like working for like a long stand, working for a cured, working for with uh, intern for stay silent was a little different because it's like these are like-minded people who share the same vision right and, like and they're people who look like me um you know what i mean yeah so um but as far as like working with I've, i learned so much working with all these people or even whenever i collab or anything because it's like like working retail i learned how to talk to anybody 
and that helps. You kind of have to when you work yeah. retail. <laughs> you never know who's gonna walk through through the bad taste. Who would walk through the bad taste doors or walk through the cure doors? Especially like in the arcade, like you like you just never knew. What yeah, the fuck yeah, was you could happen. get me in there, obscure brand Jesus. You feel me? Knows? Like yeah. and just like. <laughs> Working with them, I had to learn all like I've always like liked fashion. I wouldn't say fashion is like my passion or anything. I like I like what I like. However, like working for Sudi and Longston, both people who are incredibly incredibly knowledge in very specific things about fashion, I had to learn a lot because at one point, like I was working at Bad Taste, just me. Like when Long was out thrifting or out creating or painting, it was me in the store. So it's like I had to be knowledgeable in case this guy comes in and is just like, yo, tell me the information on this t-shirt from 1976 and it's like i kind of got to know it because i'm selling it for 300 dollars. you know what i mean like so it's like now i'm learning new things that are like kind of come kind of help me now it's like i can randomly just talk to anyone about clothes because it's like i know a decent amount especially working with sudi who's just like again like you mentioned you just go in there and have conversations like sudi will tell you who fucking sold the shirt like he will tell you like where the shit was printed like he's super like the way i am with hip-hop is how sudi is with uh clothing and i th- always thought that was fascinating so just kind of learning those things and just being able to like even though this isn't the thing I'm passionate about, it's helping me. Like I help me helping them with their social media, me helping the brand get bigger, me like being a part of something from the ground up. You get to see the evolution. Exactly. And you get to see like what it takes to run a successful business. Like I started working at Cured before it opened. Like I remember I was like, there were like, I was, were you the creative director for it at a time or am I mistaking? I mean, I I I call myself the creative director, but like, you know, yeah. Like when I was creative director in photo shoots, like pretty much everything, especially when I was working at Cured, like living here, everything was pretty much hands on. Like, cause it's like, we're with working with Sudi. I don't think like there's no how to run a vintage store book. Like he's figuring this shit out as we go. We're coming up with ideas in real time. That's that trial and error, error I'm talking about. So it's like, we were throwing things at the wall and just hoping it stuck. You know what I mean? And it's like, just seeing like someone who was just like had no issue investing in himself investing in like something that as, as crazy as like if like i'm like 10 years ago imagine telling someone i'm gonna sell open a store where we sell used shirts for x amount of money yeah like vintage stores existed but not the way they not do now. like now like, this like, is like a boom period for yeah that. like it, it wasn't like this like there was always cool stores that did cool things but it wasn't like it, like i remember telling my mom hey, i ordered a store she's like people are buying shirts for that much like it was such a wild like I have friends of that, friends who are like i have a motley crew jacket signed by the original members how much do you think i get for that i'm like you will get stupid money for that right now <laughs> like, yeah you like need to sell that and it's so yeah hell yeah working for working for people who do things that you're semi into even if you're not into it there's always something you can learn like and i, I remember mentioning earlier like i have no issue being 28 and turning for someone because it's like i like knowing things i like the knowledge that comes with it there's I don't know everything and I don't ever, I will never claim to know everything. I'm learning as I go. You know what I mean? I'm still learning every day, especially in the event space, especially in the music space. Cause one thing you got to know to be in this field is how to adapt and working in all these different places or working with these people, you learn how to adapt. You learn to be like, okay, well this event didn't do well. How can we get it better? Or this week we sold this amount of stuff at Cured. What, what can we learn from this? So why, how, yeah, why did that? Why did not, that thing do well and this other thing didn't? Are we not posting enough? Are we not? Are we not posting the things that bring people in? Are we not? Am I the way I greeted that last customer? Did I not greet them well enough to where they want to spend their money? Like everything was a, how can we improve on? And it's like being able to be a part of these things that are like owned by my friends, but also like becoming kind of like household names. Like I would say, bad taste, bad taste is a household name if you're into the clothes. If you're into clothes, you know what cure it is. If you're into events, you know stay silent is. But like to see I mean, those, bad taste is doing the faded trade show now, which, which is, is like, fucking which insane. Is, which is and it's bringing all the other vintage people. Like, like I'm in Atlanta yeah. talking about faded, and they know exactly what I'm talking about, and I'm just like, these are the homies. I was interviewing Longston for the show where they hadn't done the first faded yet; they were about to. Mm-hmm. So like having that in the archives is crazy to me because now I can put that out and be like, this is the guy before that faded show even happened like he was about to do it exactly so like just, i just learned a lot man and it's like i I always i've appreciated this journey like immensely because it's like i've been able to work with a lot of people that i really respect like everyone i named I, I i highly respect and like even if we're not working hand in hand all the time these are people that like i can't tell my story without talking about a lot of people i'm going to mention today like so, even, even jabron i don't ho- yeah. i don't i don't get into hosting without jabron I saw Jabron host and I was just like, wow, he's the first host I enjoy. I, by the way, I could do this. You know what I mean? That, um, I was going to save this for later, but yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, no. Cause I actually, it's bringing up good points, but it's questions that I was going to save, but I'd rather just ask him now since mm-hmm. we're on the topic. 
How important do you think it is? Because you were mentioning a couple of things like, hey, I'm working with these people that look like me, which yeah. I think is a huge statement. And yeah. that it's a statement that's been said by other guests on this show. Yeah. Um, shout outs to Michael Silva, Bass PVD. Yeah. That was, that was something Shots that he, base, he had yep. mentioned um, in his like, kind of homie. origin story. Yeah. Also a great dude. Another episode you should go listen to. Um, but like, also the homie. But, uh, you know, like in talking to him about history. So the reason why I asked that, because you're talking about like, hey, I wouldn't have got into hosting if it wasn't for Jabron. Yeah. I wanted to work with people that look like me, I, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. How important is it, do you think, regardless of a person's background or, or where they grew up or where they came from, mm-hmm. to see other successful people, and I know everybody's version of success is defined differently, Absolutely. that either look like them or come from the same area of that, as them or share similar interests. Basically, how important isn't it that you can see yourself in a person who's doing what you want to do? Super important. I think it's what makes you, what made me really start going harder. Like when I see people from, like when I see people like going like to my first. of the possible. It's like, oh, it is possible because yeah. that person did it. Going to my first, I went, my first day trip, I went to the downtown one. It was the um one, not like the Kennedy Plaza one, uh, the, the, um, What's that building that across from Kennedy Plaza? Not that that not that date troll. The um, what what are, what are the bracelets called? It's the something center where the the skating rink is. The, oh, the skating the skating center. Yeah, so yeah, Alex yeah. Center. Alex and I yeah. center. Thank you. So the first date troll I went to was downtown, but it wasn't that one. It's the uh, it's like the building where the guy has like the like the hand his hand out like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. I can't remember. The I can't. Building. I don't know the name of the the, the lot. That's the first date troll I went to. When I went to that event and I saw how many people were there, how fly we looked, again, being around people that looked like us and just being like, the homies did this, I was like, anything's possible. They brought this many people outside, no violence, great music, niggas got drunk, did the thing, ah, 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 nothing well. I was like, anything's possible. When you see, when, I, when I'm chilling with Sudi at his apartment, I see all his vintage clothes around the house and he's not even thinking of a store to see him having a a store in the province place mall that's one of the biggest stores in there like figuratively and actually in like real like hype wise it's hard to not it's hard to not see that and be like i can't i can do this like it's like i've seen my friends bring their visions to life and like execute it to a possible point where they're like high key living their dreams you know what i mean like so seeing that in real time is phenomenal and it's like something you can't take like you can't like i i don't know i you can't take that away from someone so to, like so to like not be a part of it but to see it in real time is phenomenal like i love it and it's it's super important it's what's made me put a battery in my back once i again once i started going outside more and like seeing people execute their ideas a bit a lot more is when i was like this is very possible there's no such thing as an idea that can't pop because it's like again i remember being in sudi's crib like mad couches just imagine like this like your setup like thousands of shirts just all around everywhere mad sneakers and yeah, just, for, for me it's the records and all the shirts and stuff in you the closet. Like, <laughs> like just crazy shit and just and like to see him put that in the store is like it's hard to like not be like i can do this too so it's, it's it's super important i think if i didn't i think if i didn't see those things in real time i don't think i would be doing this as hard as i do i think this tees up my next question perfectly okay um which is you know you're doing the the radio, then it's internet radio, then it's podcasting. Mm-hmm. I think kicking it with Cooge comes later, mm-hmm. but you're you're still you're doing the, the podcasting. Overall thing. essence of it was was there. Yeah, kicking yeah. it with Cooge like it's probably like the radio the ri- the next iteration of it. Thank the next the the, uh, the next evolution of it. exactly three point oh of the of the of your radio. First it was days. like the Notecast, which was me and Louis. Then we did the Notecast with me, Louis, and Rich. Then we had a girl co host. Well, like, it was just a lot of trial and error. But, like, eventually I was just kind of like. You got the. Kick, kicking it with Cooch is the, is, the, is the iteration of it. It's now. the thing that I wanted for me. Like, I don't. I, I'll, I'm always down to do a podcast with the homies. Like, if, if, if we can consistently do it. But to me, kicking it with Cooch is like, I want it like this. I want yeah. to sit down and just pick a lot of the people's brains that I really fuck with. And a lot of the times, a lot of my kicking it episodes are people that like, I'm always around, but I never, I mean, a lot of people you mentioned, like, like your Nino, yeah, you know, like, like your cam, yeah, like Jane, uh, any, you, you were, yeah, I think you said to Jay, like you're the inspiration behind this, behind this podcast or something like that on the, um, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. History. Cause you, you get to like, again, I, I see these people in passing, like, even with you, like I've, this is probably the longest we've ever talked and I've known oh, yeah. you for like a fucking decade at this point. I remember bringing like some custom jackets I made to like to the shop and you were yeah. like, shit, I might want to have to get one of those. But yeah. I remember buying like two tees off you. Um, 
and so you're doing all that. Mm-hmm. You're doing the 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 review site, yeah. basically the the platform of putting artists out, but also reviewing artists. So you're doing all that. You're you're doing your own shows to showcase talent mm-hmm. and promoting shows. Yes, sir. How does poetry come into the mix? Because I find that super interesting. Oh man, because uh, so I, th- I think that's an important one to talk about. Because I think like you know, it's my it's my most consistent thing. And that's the other thing too. And the reason why I I really want to get into that a little just a little bit is because the last time like poetry was kind of popular was like what deaf poetry, like 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 yeah. as far as like in pop culture, like, yeah, pop no, hundred percent, and like. Then they brought it back where, like, a, ve- a very early in his career, yay, yeah. Kanye West was was there most. But then it went, uh, uh, went it kind of, like, died out It's again. like my introduction to poetry, the Kanye, we- the Kanye right. West and, episode. And so, like, and I think for me it was, like, the, the original Deaf Poetry and then also, like, the Saul Williams movie, Slam. Like, that mm-hmm. was a whole other one for me. Like, that Gotta watch got it. got me into it. That's, it. It's a very good movie. Um, might, might have just inspired the next uh, flyer. But um, if you if you watch Saul Williams Slam, it's, like, if you're into poetry, like, definitely watch it. Mm-hmm. Uh. And before you get in the answer, the reason why I want to tell you this is because I had a buddy who, um, my buddy Terrence, Terrence, if you uh, listen or watch this episode, yes, I'm, I'm mentioning you. So hopefully this will be funny. But I remember Terrence, he's from like Seattle. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I mentioned Seattle is that I think there's an idea of poetry in people's heads. Yeah. And there's this kind of stereotypical idea of like a dude saying some random shit yeah. maybe somebody's playing bongos or acoustic guitar yeah. and it's like that oh what was that movie it was a nice movie so I married an axe murderer and like the it's a comedy but like the Mike Myers um, not the serial killer character the uh, comedian Mike Myers yeah Austin Powers he plays a main in that and it's like this stereotypical 90s cafe where like a cappuccino is the size of an entire bowl yeah and you hear like, this jazz band playing he's got like a projector he's like Harriet Sweet Harriet, like that was like his like poem. Yeah, and so I think there's like an idea of that in people's hundred percent. And so I bring Terrence this to your poetry thing, and he's like, I don't know, like, nah, it's not what you're thinking. And he goes, we pay the money, we get in. He's looking around. This is at like, um, I guess, formerly revival Lost Valley. I'm not trying to, you know, start that whole rumor not mill sure. or whatever. But we're in there, and Terrence is like. This is amazing. Appreciate this you, is like he's like this is way better than the crap I deal with in Seattle. He's like this is a whole different vibe. Hey, shout um, to so I want to put say all that because it definitely impressed him, and he's from an area where the, I guess like he's like yeah, this is good. Like the poetry, I'm not deal with this crap. So I was like, all right, that's awesome. But Fire. like, but I say all that because I think that there's this stereotypical image of poetry in people's mm-hmm. heads and poetry slams and poetry events. And yours is nothing like that. So thank you for saying that. Yeah, like, and I, and I mean, <laughs> and I mean nothing like that in a positive sense. Yeah, it's com- nah, thank it's, you for it's that. completely d- different. Because we like, agree, it's, and it's a cool, and it's a, and it's like, that's what yes. I think of. <laughs> that's what I think um, of. So yeah, what what got you into into wanting to do a poetry night, and then. Were you aware, and like, it seems like you were aware of those stereotypes at the time. So Absolutely. It was, so it was like, okay, what got you into it? But then what was the plan to make it different? All right. So boom. Um, so Louis, corner of the Daily Note, I feel like I really wanted him to have his own baby. I really was very like keen. Like I had dope concepts, which was my thing. I had the podcast, which was my thing. Louis was like blogging. That was his thing. But I was like, we got to find something else that works for him. Louis has always been like a really like a, has been was always a wordsmith and he was always like always mentioned that he would write. So fast forward, we met this girl named Katrina. Katrina is like the first person I know that dropped the poetry book. And I remember being like super impressed by that. I was like, wow, someone my age is dropping a book. That's fucking crazy. And um, I remember she did a like a like a like a pop up book signing situation at um Studio Lounge. And I remember being like, this is cool. But I'm like, I like I remember vividly just being like, oh, this is cool. I'm like, I think it's weird that's here, though. I like uh and no offense to who put that together it was definitely one of the homies I wish I could remember I don't know if it was like Rael or Latif it was someone like that but I remember just being like this is weird I feel like it should be a lot more intimate like there should be people doing poetry it should be like the stereotypical thing that I was thinking of so I remember um t- ooh, I remember talking to Louie and being and Katrina because we were all friends and just being like why don't we throw our own thing where like you Katrina sells her books we have some people do open mic it'll be cool and like like he mentioned the goofy movie I remember just like it can, I was like it can be similar to like what the goofy movie was just kind of like at a cool spot cool music being played the ambience is right but I'm just like but it'd be a daily note show but so it has to be like hip-hop like I want it to not be like people can snap people can like people can go up there and like speak their heart out and like people go up there and say real shit but i'm like i also want it to feel like a party like i want it to feel like 
we're gonna do an hour of poetry and then we're gonna play this new cardi record that's what i wanted to feel like from day one i was keen on that i'm like if we're gonna do it because there's other poetry nights you know what i mean and like we originally started doing it at ace 20 who has prof slam i remember just being like we got to make it incredibly different like this isn't going to be a poetry slam where people were, we're going up there and giving them giving them like uh ratings this ain't that we're not this is it's not a competition it's a place where people can go up there and express themselves and i want to have a dj because i want the music to be cool because the daily notes all about music and i want it to be like I don't know, I just wanted to be cool. Like, I was not saying that other poetry nights aren't cool because they are, but I, I was very keen on, like, I wanted to feel like an event from day one. That was the idea. So we did an AS20, and it, it was a really cool vibe. Um, We set out the chairs. We had, a, we had like, a cool playlist uh, made, and it just ended up being dope. So originally, when I realized how many pretty women went, I was like, oh, this is the thing that's going to be different with us. Like, women are, like, I remember women came dressed as if they were going out. You know what I mean? And I remember just being like, this was this is what's gonna set us apart. The fact that it's it, it's an event where people are coming to put they're putting that shit on to get fly, but it's still it has that poetry aspect. It's still respecting the craft. It's still respecting the essence of what this is because we're 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 putting heavy hitters up there. We've had Rudy come to poetry night since like our early days. Louis's always been nice. We've always had really great poets coming through. We've always had great artists coming through. We've always had the ideas to have vendors because it's like my always my biggest thing has always been like artists. It's hard being an artist. It's hard, it's hard being a photographer and making money. It's hard being someone that paints to make money. It's hard having a clothing line and not being able to put yourself in stores. So it's like if I can have a, a event spaces where people can sell their stuff for free and keep all their profits, that's cool too. Um, if I can have a, a space where people can get gr like good at performing, this could be that too. So this is going to be the last question of like the creative ish stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to get more into the tactical things. Absolutely. Um, with the time that we got left, but mm -hmm. the last of the creative questions, cause I, you know, we're talking about all these different things that you did and all these people you interacted with. Mm -hmm. And the first time you, you made like some money with some of these, mm -hmm. the things that you did, what was the, there there's, all right. If, and uh, if I'm misquoting uh, to anybody that's watching or listening, I apologize, but mm -hmm. I forgot which comedian said it. He said it on Howard Stern. It might've been, it might've been Seinfeld actually, but he was saying how like, when you're coming up um, and you're not making a ton of money, mm -hmm. but somebody comes and says they really appreciate your work or mm -hmm. they like, they just say, Hey, I'm a fan of what you do. Like that gives you enough energy just to keep going. So the reason 100%. why I set that up is because what was that first, like, you know, you were mentioned somebody said that, you know, Hey, I'm 28 and I'm an OG. Cause like somebody was listening to, or looking at, you know, your site, the, the daily note mm -hmm. for a while. What was with, please stop calling me OG by the way, guys. I'm not like, <laughs> Like, I get it. I have a kid. I know I'm, I'm older, but damn, stop it. But uh, I, I, <laughs> Please. Like, wait, if you're old, I'm ancient. All right. Like, you know what I'm like, like, <laughs> like, like, we're just not old. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking assholes. Um, <laughs> but the reason why I sell is what was the first like surreal moment for you where it was like, oh, like this is a thing people care about, regardless of like what thing you were doing. It's like, what, like, what was the first moment for you where it's like, oh, damn, people like actually mess with this. Like, this is a thing people care about. Uh, I I would say the week I, I we did our first events trade pop up and uh having adult concepts, like seeing people like we did our our we did our um pop up I think it was on a Saturday or Sunday seeing people take the time out their day to come kick it with us spend their money drive park chill with us drink with us all types of stuff I was like this is dope we're building a community, um when we did dope concepts it was just a free hip hop show when we packed it out it was our first time hosting I'm like damn like. We're building something. I would say uh, I have another one for you too, because like I'll, I'll give you a more recent one. I would say like with the poetry, because we we're just talking about poetry. It's like beautiful to know that like so many like poets are very receptive of what we're doing and of this community we built. The fact that I've been able to have a consistent poetry night and not live here, it was another one of those moments where I was like, "That's Yo. the part that like astounds me." I'm like, "Holy crap, this dude's doing it, and he's like not here all the time." That was definitely one of those recent moments where I was just like. Wow. Because I remember talking to Jabron and uh, Sean and just being like, I'm moving soon. Um, yeah, like, it's been real. Like, you know what I mean? It's been real as fuck. Like, uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you with the, for what this was. I don't really know what this looks like. Because I remember being like, yo, Louis, do you want to take over? Louis, absolutely not. Because Louis doesn't want to host. Louis wants to do poetry. Louis wants to, like, be low-key. He wants to, like, be near. If you see Louis at an event, he's near a wall with a drink and not talking to people. 
then he will, but then he'll disappear. Like he, he's not hosting. That's kind of how I am at events, which is which is weird. No, like it's <laughs> like, not like, not weird for him doing that. It's just like oh, like I'm the same way, huh? No, no, no. There's a lot of people like that. There's your there's your super extroverted friend me, and there's your introverted friend who's gonna make people feel comfortable, Louis. But um, I remember just being like, yeah, hey, we're not continue this. But Jabron's like, why? Like why why wouldn't you? Like it does well, and I'm just like, who's gonna host it? He's like, we'll just figure it out. So my first one doing it, not being here, I was like fucking scared. I'm like, I don't. I don't know what it's going to look like because I'm like I'm really calm and reserved and calm, cool and collected. But like Conrad will tell you like event nights, I'm like fucking everywhere, like checking the door 700 times, make it talking to everybody. Like I'm super hands on because like I really know what I want things to feel like and look like and, and be like. So my first time doing it without it and just seeing it like pack out and seeing it run smoothly, I was just like, fuck, this is crazy. Like we built something that no matter it doesn't fucking matter who's hosting. It isn't, no offense, like, to say about best host in the world, but, like, it doesn't matter who's hosting. It doesn't matter who's DJing. It doesn't matter who's on the bill. People will come because we built something that people really enjoy. We, we, we have these Terrence moments where people come, and they're like, this is fucking fire. I'm going to keep coming back every month. And, like, those DMs, those mentions, those people that come to me and are just like, yo, thank you for building this. I look forward to it every month. It's just, like, that's one of those surreal moments where you're just like, fuck, like, this idea that I came up with in my basement with louis and katrina lit off super like cheap alcohol and absara food turned into something that we've been doing for like ever and it's like people look forward to it to the point where we can do two in a week and it's not like overkill you know speaking of um splitting your time up uh, Mm -hmm. because i think time like and how people manage it and Mm -hmm. things it's it's important and you know you mentioned you have a kid so you have a kid i do and baby p and one thing i've noticed is sometimes I think there's this con- there's this perception out there that hey once you have a kid like that's it and I get why like I empathize with like yeah you have a f- like it should be about the kid now for sure right but then at the same time doesn't mean you lose yourself in the process and the reason why I mention this is like you have your kid and you're splitting your time between Atlanta and Providence mm-hmm. how do you prioritize like which things get worked on because you have the kicking it with cooch mm-hmm. because you have the daily note because mm-hmm. you have the dope concept show that you promote because you have the poetry night that you mm-hmm. promote how do you manage and how do you pay attention to this this project may need more resources at this point versus this other one is it based on things like hey this like i'll give an analogy like certain fashion houses there are certain things that they make a shit ton of money on yeah that money is then used to fund the other projects like or other fun, things they do shit, yeah other do that maybe don't make as much money but things that they need to do to keep the brand going so do you prioritize the things you do based on like this one generates this much revenue so pour more money into that because that's the thing making all the money is it split even like how do you how do you determine where your time and energy and effort goes it's a wonderful question uh, no plot, just vibes. Real <laughs> shit. Like, uh, like there's not a. I wish I had an answer for you. Like, um, it is really whatever I'm focusing on at the moment. I think I, 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 it's impossible for me to focus on one thing, and I think that's why I do so much things. It's like, like for example, right? Like with poetry night specifically, I can plan a poetry night at this point in my sleep because I've been doing it for so long. We have we have a method. We have like a. We, we kind of understand where it's going. So it's like that might not need as many as much resources as time as playing a dope concepts because it's a very different thing where it's like it's different artists every time. It's going to be a different rollout. It's going to be it's going to be completely different to what this is, cause especially where dope concepts is when it's in a whole new state. So it's like certain things aren't going to need as much tender that, loving care because that was my other question was going to be can you walk me through the logistics of each one of these things and i think you're kind of doing that now so for so for example like planning a poetry night at this point it's like i already know who's djing it's, it's either jabron or cam that's just yep. what we built it on so it's like i don't really have to reach out to other people i know what that's gonna look like typically like i have the same flyer guy so I, like i already like my notes like I, so i um i have like uh in my notes i'll put the the references that i want like yep. like this is what i think it could look like this is where where i want to take pictures from this is the information and it's like at that point it's like since i have that kind of that notes filled up now it's filling in the blanks now it's like okay now it's time to reach out with other poets which i'm not gonna lie to you find, finding poets is relatively easy because we do the open mic so it's like oh this person killed the open mic last time let's give him 10 more minutes now or this person uh the person that vended had mentioned that they have a homie that wants to vend and they never done it let's bring it or like yo conrad has a homie who um has a clothing line and he wants to sell his stuff let's bring him here like really like it's just filling in the blanks, but like, uh, 
like an event like something that's going to take a little more like time and effort like a dope concept it's like all right now we're like we got to find the artist we got to like pick artists that we really like now we got to make sure that like they go with each other well it's like i can't have this artist who's like super hype and crazy and then like super soft-spoken r&b girl on the same show it's just not gonna work or, or if it does work how are we gonna make it work yeah like or, like, do you, like who do you put on the beginning versus the end yeah like, how do you want it's, this it's a lot more structure because it's like you're dealing with like with poetry night it's like yes we're dealing with artists but it's like there's kind of like poetry etiquette and like hip-hop etiquette are very different like there's two no different audiences yeah it's two different there's audience. crossover but there's two different it's audiences. two different audiences is it's like a different way i don't think people like Having a rapper open a show isn't the same as having a, a poet open a poetry night. It's right. not think of it like that. Like people don't want to. People don't want to go first. Poetry yeah. night, we don't really run into that. So it's like putting, making those, making those things work, and understanding how I'm going to position that. But certain events get certain different times. I definitely do. I think I do an okay job of like working. Because you're running that, and you're still running the Daily Note. Yeah. And you're running your Kicking It With Cooch podcast. I'm not going to hold you, man. Running the Daily Note has become a little easier in the past few months because I've been building a really phenomenal team. Shout out to Tess. Shout out to Scotty. Shout out to Stefan. Shout out to Anaya. Like, we've building a team, and just like, this is the first year I can honestly say where it's like the structure to the Daily Note, like how we post. It's like everyone has their specific days. We, we, we have our templates. Like, it's becoming easier as we build a team. That's another thing of advice I give to people. Like, really get a team of people, even if, like, they're not helping with you with your day to day. Like people, you can just bounce ideas with. Like it's amazing that I have a group chat where I can be like, "Yo, what do you think of this?" This goes right into my next question, actually. Fire, which is how? Because um, and I know you're a wrestling fan. Oh, fucking um, huge wrestling fan. So I'll use I'll use a, a wrestling analogy Love to that. help illustrate this question. Um, one of the problems with anybody who knows the history of certain wrestling promotions, WCW was one mm -hmm. that. It was one promotion at first, then it died, mm -hmm. and then it came, and then it then it turned into WCW. That happened, and then that died. Mm -hmm. And in both iterations, pre WCW was Jim Crockett before it turned into WCW. Um, then WCW happened, right? They had their version, and in both instances, which which is really interesting, that is that in both of those times, regardless of who was running it the problem was growth too fast. They expanded too fast mm -hmm. and money was supposed to be coming in, but it hadn't come in yet. That's why Jim Crockett lost his promotion and had to rebrand as WCW and Turner took it over. Yeah, Ted, that, Ted and, Turner took it over yep, the second time and around. Then, yep, then, yep that, that's the second iteration. But even in the second iteration, you hear interviews of Bischoff and all these other people running it saying that they tried to grow and expand too quickly yeah. to take on McMahon, and that was one of the things. So you had mentioned, have a team around me now for the Daily Note. Mm -hmm. I've always had a team, but I would say this team is probably the most structured team. Continue, though. Yeah, yeah. So the reason why I ask about the growth question is how do you – because I think that's a thing that people try to determine like, hey, I want to do everything myself, but I maybe should hire somebody. But when do I hire somebody? When do I bring somebody on? So for you, what were there any indicators of like, yes, I should go into this new thing at Poetry Night now versus before? Were there any indicators of like – oh, I have to invest more money in this. Like, what are some of the key indicators for you of like growth or trying a new thing or taking somebody on and bringing somebody into the team? Like, what do you look out for? Because I think of when when to grow and how, I think is the big thing that people yeah. sometimes don't fully grasp. No, absolutely. Um, I think once, like for me, like I, I, I won't lie, when I first started, it was very much like I want to do everything myself because this is my baby. You know what I mean? And that's un fully understandable. For sure, but like, I remember bringing Louie in and just being like, wait, we can post double the amount quicker. Like, okay, this is cool. Like, I found somebody that I trust I can work with. Um, So from then on, it really just, it's really, with me, it's really all about, like, the, like it being organic. Like, all the people that I work with, it's not on some, like, I, I found them on Instagram and it was just like, yo, come work with me. It was like, we met a bunch of, like, Conrad, I've known, Con I've known him for, like, a decade at this point, And we've been Twitter friends for fucking ever. And, like... 13, 14, buying sneakers off him and all that. And it's just like, I like he, I've always known he's had a camera and he's always known I did the Daily Note, but it was just on, on one day it was on some organic, like I'm throwing my block party, yo, bro, can I bring my camera? And it was that one day where he just pulled up with his camera, took pictures and he was just like, I really love this. Like, I'm going to start pulling up all the time. And it went from just kind of like random to like, I'm at every poetry night. He's at every, every he's at every poetry and everything. It's just like, yo, you might as well be the team. It's just like, cause it's like, and on his end, it's like, yo, a lot of people are starting to fuck with me and book me and like reshare my stuff because like I was not scared, but not put, he wasn't putting out things into the world. And with me, it's just like, oh, like 
I guess I should be documenting these things. So it's like definitely like you find a need, you feel the need, but it's also like with me, like it's organic. Like the people I work with, I genuinely want to be, I, I want to have a great relationship with them because like I feel like when you're doing business is weird, money's weird. Like when you're dealing with money and people, it's always a weird thing. So it's like it's better to do things with your people if you can maintain that. Um, but I, 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 there has to be some type of relationship in, involved. Like, it's very rare that I work with someone randomly that I never, like, even, like, booking me to host, like, if I don't know you, odds are, like, I might not do it. Not because I don't want to or, like, the budget's not there, whatever the case may be. It's just, like, there has to be some type of... Some type of, like, connection where the yeah, you know, it's going to work. And, like, and I think it's another thing is knowing when to say no. I think sometimes, yeah. like, when you're hungry, you want to do everything. It's, like, yeah. maybe doing that thing, you got that money, but now, like, you have to deal with this I, other And I don't like stuff. what I'm doing. Like, yeah. Yeah, like and you definitely got to be picky. I mean, obviously, when you're young and hungry, you probably do everything that comes your way if you're, like, because you want to get the motion and all that and you want to, like, get good at it. And, like, I definitely have my, my, my share of, like, yeah, fuck it, I'll do it just because I want to get better at my stage presence or better at interviewing, whatever the case may be. But, like... One thing I've always learned, I've noticed about me is like I work better with people that I have some type of connection with. with. And it's like to me, that's really important because, again, it's like I'm learning as I get older that one of my favorite things to do is help people execute their ideas. This is something that I've recently learned about myself. I may have to talk to you more then. (laughs) For sure. Hell yeah. But that's something I'm learning. I like it makes me really happy that I'm going to keep bringing up Conrad. he's, He's right here. It makes me really happy that like he went from like not putting his work out to like shooting a lot of important shit and getting invited to he met you at the panel that cam did like it's amazing to see like what him just coming to my event once has done and i'm not saying we're responsible for it we're absolutely not but what i'm saying is like i feel like we had a we had a platform where he was able to showcase his work and people were able to see it a lot quicker and and be like this kid's dope let's work and it's just like that's so cool to me and it's like i like working with people that i want to see grow and I'm not saying for, for us to work together, we need to be friends. It's just like, I just would like to have some type of common ground. I, I, I got to know you're, you're a decent person. I got to know I fuck with you. Like, cause it's like when we're working together, I'm very hands-on. Speaking of growth, how do you determine, cause I think this is something that um, plagues like people who are trying to make content online nowadays, mm-hmm. because there's this idea of like, how many times should you do it or post or keep doing something and not see the numbers go up. Like there's this weird like balance of like you have to post X amount of times, talk, right? Right. But then at some point you have to determine this is not gaining any traction. I have to switch it up. How do you like? How do you determine that with anything you do? When like we need to switch up or change something versus no, we need to keep going. I would say it's important to know when to adapt. It's important to like something that's going to be working for us for three months isn't going to work three months from now potentially because that's how quick this thing goes. Um, I really feel like it's just like with anything, just reading the room, just like understanding, like, I feel like social media has made it a lot easier to be like, this is the best time to post and this is who's reaching it and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, I'm not saying you got to study that shit, but you should definitely pay attention. You just, it's really all about noting your audience and what you're doing. And it's like, you just got to be able to adapt. Like, like, I don't, I don't necessarily have like, a. repeat the question again. So basically, like, when when is it time to modify or switch things up? Because there's like a balance of like you need to keep posting, and be consistent, put stuff out there. But then, how long do you do that with without seeing growth? Like, when is the cutoff point for you personally from like your projects and what you've done, where it's like, hey, this thing's not working. We need to switch it. Like, what do you look for when you have when you feel like you have to do that? Um, I mean, I pay attention to everything, right? I pay attention to who's coming, who's not coming, who's already being, who's not this event didn't do that well and it i after every event and this is something me and louis have always done we just recap it like real life recap it like okay this many people came do you think this many people came because it was raining do you think this many people didn't come because of blah 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 like really just t- stepping away from like this is my event so i know this shit's dope to being like okay let's co- look at it from the outside perspective what about this thing would have made people not come you know what I mean? Or what about this thing made people come and just like being honest and just being like, is it the price point? Was the price point too high? Like asking these honest questions. And again, I have the luxury of being around people that I really fuck with, that I'm really friends with, that I can ask real questions with and then get outside opinions. Like I think you, you, when you, when you're not having these real conversations with people and if they're not being real, if they're being real with you, you can learn a lot. Like I can ask a homie, like, yo, what did you think of this event? And ask for real feedback and be like, oh, okay, like, 
this is the reason why you didn't enjoy it. I'm sure other people felt this way. Let's try it this way. Like, okay, our like even like down to little things like price point. Like, okay, like if it's this cheap, people might not appreciate it as much. But if it's this expensive, people might not. Because hey, pricing is always weird because it's like, especially when it's like a creative work you like somebody did, they feel yeah. weird pricing it because like art it's and commerce. It's super hard to figure out pricing, and it's like I've like or like even like sometimes when I do free shit, I feel like people if if you, all your events are free, people might not appreciate it because it's like you don't think your shit's good enough to chart to pay for. It. Why would I go? Right. Some people think like that. So it's just like, OK, like, how do I figure out the perfect price point? And, it's a, and like I said earlier, trial and error, throwing shit at the wall and fi- hoping it sticks and just being like, OK, this stuck. I did. I do it again. It stuck again. OK, third time. It didn't stick this third time. Why didn't it? What do we do different? Or is it because we did it the exact same way? So people are like, or is it because like it's just run its course and now we have to switch it up? And that's it. And it's just like, that's like the luxury of being able to try things, yo. No lie is like super important. Like the fact that I've have, like I'm 28. I feel like I've been, I feel like it's crazy. Like having this conversation, just kind of going through like the things and like putting timestamps to it. Like, damn, I really been doing this since 2010, but it's like at 2024, I really feel like I still am just getting started. Like everything I've done up until this point has just been kind of like, what's the word? I've has kind of just been like, practice like a like if like i'm not if this was to be sports i'm not in the nba yet you know what i mean like everything at this point has been a a this, this is building up to the game g league games they've been college games it's like i'm not even fucking in the league yet but i me having all this experience i feel like once i get to where i want to be which i feel like i'll never be where i want to be but that's just like a satisfaction thing with me but like once i get to the, the places where i feel like i deserve to be i think i'm going to be ready for it because i have so much knowledge and i have so much like experience under my belt so i can just be like this won't work i know it won't work because i've done it and yeah. you, you already know how this wack. is gonna play out like you like i've seen this movie yeah i've seen this movie a bunch of times like oh like or even like when i'm helping friends plan events it's like mm, it's not gonna work and it's like it could work because maybe it's your thing and maybe you'll deliver it differently but if you do it the way I th- I, the, the way you're explaining it to me it's not gonna work so getting into the final questions here mm-hmm. and, I, and i think this leads right into one of them mm-hmm. and um with conrad that that your name? Yeah. Okay. Do you prefer Conrad or Dylan, bro? So it's funny because I prefer Conrad. Okay. Okay, but so so in uh, Conrad, the reason why I'm mentioning you is because you are a photographer, so you might know this name. But I want to quote this uh, particular person. Um, dead now, but he was like one of the most famous fashion photographers in the world. What's his name? Bill Cunningham. Um, yep. So like he like. His French chore jacket that we would always wear to like these high fashion events that he would like take pictures of is mm-hmm. like hanging up in the Fashion Hall of Fame like posthumously. He had a famous quote, um, and I, I may be miswording it, so if I do, uh, feel free to come at me, anybody online. But one of the quotes was like, and again, I don't know how he made his money because he was doing all this high end fashion photography, all these big brands, and he never took any money from them. And somebody asked him why. That's fine. And, and I remember seeing this dude like like one of his final things that he covered was um, the Dover Street Market New York store when it first opened. Mm-hmm. And I remember like like him walking by me and just, I said hi to him. I was like, I know who you are and like you're a legend. That's like, crazy. Shit. Um, the reason why I mentioned him is he has this quote where he was like, yeah, I didn't accept any money because the moment I take a dollar, it's not my art anymore. Mm. It's theirs. The moment you accept it. And it like, that's, that, a fi- that's a fire quote. And that's but the so it leads me to this question. Yeah. Let's get like not even money, but I think now because at, you know, as you know, Gary V would say, attention's the new currency because attention or uh, uh, if we want to go way back, uh, Eric Bischoff controversy creates cash. My guy. Um, but is there ever a concern or is there ever something with you? And I think the, the, the reason why I brought that quote is like, he just did whatever he did and that was it. Mm-hmm. Didn't matter if it made money, if it was popular mm-hmm. or not. When you make your stuff, is there ever a concern of like, will the audience be receptive to this? And if you ever had that concern, does that concern you where it's like, am I making the thing I want or is the audience now determining it and I don't even realize it? Because I think there's like a weird paradox no, it, there. No, it's, 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 de- it's definitely difficult because there's things I want to do where I'm just like, damn, it might not do great because it's like, this is a very specific thing. And it's like, do you control the platform or the art anymore? Person. Because yeah. now now you're tailoring it to not just you. Like at first it was for you and the homies. Mm-hmm. And now it's like you're tailoring it to people that aren't you and the homies. For sure. But you know what it is? I feel like it's never losing that, that like, 
the thing that makes you you. Like everything that I, I can honestly say that I attach my name to or like is through the daily note is things that I would go to in real life that I genuinely believe in. So it's like definitely doing things for people like obviously like I'm not if I just did events for people specifically like me, like I don't think I could throw a party where you listen to Action Bronson all day. It might only bring ten people. Cause it's like you know what I mean, like that's real life. Yeah. So it's like knowing the difference of between do, knowing the difference of doing things that are strictly for you, or and knowing how to do things that are for people that have your touch of the things that make you you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like again, throwing a poetry night. Like you hit it on the head earlier when you were like, oh, some people have this common, this like consensus of like what it's gonna look like. Where it's just like, okay, how do I do this thing that's already a thing but make it me? You know what I mean? Or how do I? make a hoodie everyone anyone can make a hoodie but how do i make this merch that still represents me but is still going to be received by the masses of people so it's like never losing that thing that makes it your, yours but also understanding that like if it was just for you it's not a business at this point you know what i mean so it's like finding the fine line of like okay how do i how do i do anything like how do i how do I make this podcast still the thing that I'm into, right? Like, how do I do a kicking it with Cooge and still make it go by my beliefs and not ask these stupid questions about who you're dating and blah, 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 blah. Oh, I've, I've got some opinions on that for the general you, you blog, like podcast sphere, but I think that's a, another conversation for but another how time. How do I? Yeah. How do you, how do you make it you? How, how do, do I make, make people unique? give a fuck about this rapper that I think is really dope, but you might not have given a fuck about. And it's like finding the, the, the fine line between those things, like still being able to be you, but still understanding that like, once I put this into the world, he's right. It's officially not mine. Like the second we like the set, like at this point, poetry night is it's mine. It's the daily notes, but it's, it's, it's for, it's for the community that we've built. So it's like, how do I make it still me? But how do I make it accessible to the people that come in? Cause it's like our last poetry night, there was a lady there who was like easily a grandmother who performed, but then there's people bringing their kids. You know what I mean? And it's like, how do I make this accessible to any, so what was your boy's name? Terrence. How do how do I make it accessible to this guy Terrence, who probably has never been in Providence, has no idea who the fuck I am, and is gonna come to this thing and be like, this shit's dope. And he was like literally saying like, like to the point where he's like, yo, he's like, I, like he him living in Seattle, he's like, I don't think you realize what you have here in Providence. He's like, I don't think you realize what you have here just as a city, but also all the stuff going on. Oh yeah, and what you have here and your proximity to stuff. We're blessed. Which leads me into this next question: you being uniquely you. Mm -hmm. Um, you have this perspective of bouncing back and forth between Providence and Atlanta. For sure. So what can you briefly describe like the evolution of Atlanta then and now mm -hmm. Providence then and now, which we talked about a little mm -hmm. bit and maybe some things that Providence could borrow from Atlanta and maybe some things we're doing here in Providence that Atlanta could start doing. Um, I feel like with Atlanta, I think one thing they, they excel at and that you can put this in like, whether it's music, whether it's fashion, whether it's fucking, whether it's business, it's like, I feel like in Atlanta, people are a lot quicker to just work with each other. I feel like there's not, there's so much accessibility there. There's so many resources there. There's so much money to be made that it's less crabs in a crabs in the barrel. I'm sure people there would, would disagree, but like from my outside perspective, I feel like, like with music, right? I feel like all the producers work with each other. I feel like all the rappers are cool with each other. I feel like all these guys do music with each other. Like, it just like something that doesn't happen in Rhode Island as as as, as much. I feel like I feel like the idea of collaboration out here isn't as. It's definitely gotten a lot better. I feel like you see more people kind of teaming up to do things and like merging ideas and whatnot. But it's like I feel like Rhode Island can be incredibly clicky sometimes. And I'm sure again that's anywhere, but like I live here, so I see it firsthand. So I feel like I feel like historically that's 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 been a thing. Yeah, for sure. So I feel like one thing they could borrow from Atlanta is just like, like with musicians, like yo, throw a producer camp. Like you know, what I mean, I, I've gone to a lot of producer camps, and I see all these producers that like know each other and work with each other, and it's like yeah, let's clap on a beat. Like we should see more of that. Like I I love what Cam did with the panel to give out this free information because it's like I see a lot so much of that in Georgia where people are just giving out free information, seminars, blah blah blah. So I think Rhode Island's head in that in that in that thing. But that's the first thing I noticed when I moved to Atlanta in 09. Like people really fuck with each other. Like if you tell someone you do some creative shit, they're very quick to be like, let me follow you. Or like my homie does this, blah blah blah. Like that's a thing there. And I feel like when I moved back to Rhode Island, that's something I brought with me. Like where it's just like, no, like, I want to share my resources with you. Again, not saying that everyone in Rhode Island is like that, but I definitely think that's something that people are doing now and you can see the improvements. You see, like, you see, like, the results where you, you see more people fucking with each other and supporting each other more because it's like 
it doesn't matter if you're the first one to make it like quote unquote or the case be be like yo like a win for Rhode Island's a win for Rhode Island I don't give a fuck if I like your shit or not if you can make it and pop that's a huge win and it's like something we should rally behind because it's like there's a trillion rappers in Atlanta winning right now and it's like they all can coexist so I feel like once the smaller states and you could say this for about Rhode Island you can probably like I have homies from Ohio who say the same thing like all these smaller cities I feel like they're so concerned on some like I want to be the first or the best where it's just like that shit don't matter now with that being said what is something that Providence is doing uniquely that other cities we're like fucking, Atlanta could borrow from we're super super incredibly versatile and I feel like I feel like since we're um I feel like something we have on a lot of people is just like how diverse Rhode Island is. There's not a pl- there's not too many places like this where you can go to an event and like a DJ can play like all forms of music from different like like Nasty can play a Cape Verdean set, a Spanish set, a hip hop set, an R and B set. <laughs> Dude, even my straight up hip hop hip hop sets are not like straight up hip hop sets, it, and, and people seem to be like, "Oh, this is and I'm like, oh, and I can do this." And now. that's in like in forty a forty minute span. Like he can take us from Cape Verde to DR back to the South Side of Providence in thirty minutes. And I feel like not too many places are this have this much amount of um diversity. So I feel like we can like I can go to uh, the. In Sala at crib and like even though I don't dance Spanish music or leave and listen to Spanish music as much as I should un- like hear these songs and be like I know these records like yeah. I'm around Dominicans like you know what I mean like 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 the Puerto Ricans know me I'm heavy there you know what I'm saying like Rhode Island has that where it just like you could there, there's since it's diverse you can do a lot of different things where it's like a lot of like one thing I noticed in, in Georgia right like I saw a tweet that I see a lot is like people complain about like how how popular Afrobeats is becoming like you go to parties. Why would anybody complain about that? It's just but you yeah. go to parties in Atlanta, and there's like since like since there's so many Africans and Caribbeans and blah 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 in Rhode Island, it's just like I'm just used to being around like hearing these songs in real time, whether it be on the radio or not. Where in Atlanta, it's like they're kind of like I want to hear Atlanta music, but it's like I can understand that because it's like this isn't something they grew up on. Where like yeah, didn't didn't Stay Sound have like was it Daytrod the first American stateside performance of by Byron Messias? Yeah, like, Taliban. And it's like I don't think that would fly well in Atlanta because people are gonna be like what the fuck is this and it's like and I'm seeing it in real time like a lot of my homies who like DJ who do like um who kind of like like my um I have a homie out there named Peter he, he like the way he DJ is very similar to like a selection very similar to like a low-key PVD out here and it's like sometimes I feel like it doesn't get the just do even though he's killing it he's always packing shit up I feel like there's a certain demographic of people who don't really understand it because it's like they're not used to it because it's not as day first and gotcha. it's like that's something we have here like on smash like again like uh, like uh, for my one of my favorite djs here is diamond and it's like watching diamond dj a set here is fucking incredible because i don't know where he's gonna take it i'm gonna have I, to send you some mixes now just no, to get your opinion no please do please do. i love good djs but i i just love that like we can do that here i love that i can be at a a poetry night and we can drop a, a nelson frieda's record and like people are gonna go up because they know it i love that we can randomly but we can also drop like a like a, a random album cut of Mob Deep and niggas are going to know it too because we're still up north so we still have that thing that we love hip hop or we can like I feel like we're just we embrace a lot of different things here and we're just like yeah alright let's do it yeah, like, we're, just like, mel- okay. we're just a melting pot of like cultures and people and it's like I feel like that's one of the few things Rhode Island has on like everybody not just the south like everybody I feel like you can be from anywhere and come here and just find a tribe speaking of um future plans and growth and things of that nature and yeah, yeah, yeah. you made a post uh, i saw and it was 2023 was the the year of branding yes sir so if that's the case what's 2024 and beyond what what are some of the things you're trying to get going expanding are, expanding okay yeah shout out to uh, benny that's benny the butcher line uh last year was about branding this year's about expanding uh that's the intro to um I didn't want to make the like the the reference that you make because I was like I don't know if he's referencing it or not and I never want to make that assumption. No, on yeah, people. it's a, it's the intro to his Hip Boy album. Um, but that's how I felt. I felt like 2023 was really like for me, anyways, was like planting a lot of seeds, like doing a lot of like the the legwork. So where this year it's like I can I feel like I can do a bunch of things because I finally I I'm not finally because I've always had resources, but I'm I'm gaining more resources. I'm gaining more access to things. I'm gaining more like confidence like i feel like every day every year we're getting better and like you know I'm, I'm learning new things so i feel like last year for me it really felt like a year where i'm just like okay i'm gonna put in the work so like 2024 i can consistently do everything that i want to do at a scheduled rate 
because it's like you know i am getting older and i i have less time to give because i do have a kid i do have a full-time job i do blah 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 blah. you know what i mean so it's like last year was figuring out okay how often can i podcast and drop okay how often can i do shows where it's not affecting my real job how often can i work to where i'm making enough money to like sustain life but also have enough time to come do a three-hour podcast with the homie you know what i mean like yeah and that's what last year was figuring it out, like figuring out, you know, I'm only two years into living in Georgia. So it's like, I'm still in like the transition period. Like your first year living in a new state is like, can you fucking survive here or not? The next year is being like, okay. Figuring out where everything is. Yeah. Like, and now the ne- like the third year is hopefully being like, okay, how can I make it? So where like I'm living comfortably in this place, at least right. for me, this is my first big move yep. like as an adult. But, um, yeah, man, like I would say, um, this year is really for me is going to, I think you're just going to see a lot more like content for me where i'm like from everywhere though like i'm I, i'm sitting on a bunch of podcasts i'm planning a lot more shows i'm trying to like really like do the things that i've been doing it's at a more consistent rate i feel like it's been consistent but now i'm really trying to like do things a lot more with intention which is like important and it's like i think last year we set those seeds i feel like we, we've been building a really phenomenal team with the daily no i feel like i've been a lot of great resources i think in atlanta like 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 Bro, I've been doing interviews in iHeartRadio because I've been inter- like interning for my homie Big Kodak, and it's just like that doesn't happen without me being ready to be like, no, I'll intern for you. I'll do a bunch of free work. I'll go to this thing for you. And understanding that like I'm not too, I feel like I have a decent resume of like in the creative world, and I feel like anyone else with my resume would be like, nah, I'm way too cool to fucking do this or do that. And it's just like, no, I'm not. I'm not at all like at all and i think that's what kids get is always going to keep me like hungry and like energized like because i i don't mind doing the work i like doing the work i love this thing that i do i love hip-hop i love the media shit i love the fashion i love all this shit so it's just like what keeps me going is just like i'm just not too cool to learn shit but i'm also taking it and putting it into my real life so it's like kind of that and i think that's what a lot of like 2023 was for me um and I just feel like in this year, you'll just see a lot more like intentional things. Like I'm trying, really trying to do the things like build my TikTok and all these things that like you're supposed to do. And like as a content creator, I'm like figuring out how to do and just not being as shy about shit. Like, I don't, I guess. So one last question I want to cover and then I'm just going to let you, you know, give, give you the open mic time. But For one sure. last question what advice would you give to like your younger self or a younger creative on the come up now, or maybe even your son, if he wants to try and do mm-hmm. the same things you're doing, what advice would you give? Man, just do the shit that you really fuck with, yo. Like I, I think that's what keeps me going is that I'm doing things that, I, excuse me, I'm doing things that I genuinely believe in. I'm doing things that I find really interesting to me. Like I'm doing things that, there's events that I could do that can be quick cash grabs that we can just do over and over again and just like cake off that. But it's just like, it's no fun in that. Like really, like if you really believe in the things that you're doing, like don't be afraid to like try it. You know what I mean? Like trial and error is important. I, I tell any new creative, like, like one of my homies, Prince, he just started making cardigans, right? Like he has his clothing line and it's like 21 years old, like f- super fresh until just like this life thing. And, like, I'm always talking to him because he's the homie and he's always just kind of, like, asking me questions. And it's just, like, one thing I always, always, always tell him is, like, yo, enjoy this now. Like, you'll never get your first sale again. You'll never have your first pop-up again. You'll never have your first drop again. You know what I mean? Like, enjoy this. Like, enjoy all these moments because these things, like, just don't come again. You know what I mean? And it's just, like, really just love what you're doing because if you don't love what you're doing, you shouldn't be doing it. If this is, like... If you have a clothing line and you don't like having a clothing line, probably shouldn't do it. You know what I mean? Like if you don't like planning shows, sure probably shouldn't be doing shows. If you don't like like do you know how many bullshit shows I had to host to get good shows? I really like hosting. I know I really like hosting because I was hosting some bullshit when I first started. I know I like doing college radio because I have to go through some bullshit just to do it. Like there's a lot of things that I've done where I'm like, I know I like this, so I'm gonna stick this through because I know better times are coming. You know what I mean? And it's like, you gotta, I feel like instant gratification. If you want instant gratification, this thing that we do might not be the thing for you. Like, yeah, you can put up a podcast right now and it can get a million views and your next podcast might get three. Shit's weird. 
You know what I mean? So it's like you have to understand with all the good that you're about to do, there might be a lot of shit where you're just like, it's whack. That this I almost quit a million times in during this process. But what keeps me going is the fact that like I'm doing shit that I think is fly to me. And just never stop doing the shit that's fly to you. Like for real, for real. Like never I love the artists that just make music and like I have a bunch of homies that have been making music forever who are just like, yeah, at this point I'm just making shit for myself and if I put it out, I put it out. But I like they just genuinely like going to a studio, making records. And that's the thing that makes them fun. Or like one thing about my older brother that I love, he um he he plays soccer a lot, right? Like probably never great enough to go to like the league or anything, but he just genuinely plays soccer every day. Like that's his thing. That's the thing that keeps him going. Like when he's stressed, he's plays soccer and blah blah blah. Like and it's like he genuinely loves this thing. And I've always admired that. I've always admired, like, people who love something enough to just do it and not have the mindset of, like, making money off it or going professional off it. I just like doing this thing. So much so that I do it in my spare time. And if that turns into a business where you make money off it, fire. Like, when I started The Daily Note, I promise you my goal was not to make money. Like, I didn't, I've never come into this thinking about making money obviously as an adult like if i'm doing some shit and putting time and effort to it there needs to be some type of like roi but like i'm still doing it because i like it and i think that's the best advice like if you're not liking the thing that you're doing and you claim that this is the thing that you love you don't love it like you maybe you're just good at it like maybe you just can draw so you're an artist but like if you don't like it like it might be a dub you know what i mean like just never stop doing fly shit. I guess that'd be my advice. Never stop doing fly shit and enjoy it. Celebrate your small wins. For real. Like, celebrate your small wins. Like, yo, I got 100 likes on this on a post on my podcast. That's big. Like, it's not fucking Joe Budden numbers, but we're not Joe Budden. Like, I feel like you need to celebrate these small things. Like, yo, I did a pop-up and I sold two prints. That's major. That's two more prints than you sold yesterday. Or my homie Prince, like, you dropped these cardigans. Like I said, like, these, they're, like, relatively expensive cardigans, like, 150, like, he got his first sale a few weeks ago and he was like fucking hyped. And I'm like, this energy that you have, keep that. That's going to keep you going. Now he sold a bunch. Like now he's like, you know, getting followers. And it's like being around an energy like that kind of reminds me of my energy when I first started being around like nasty and like being around Longston. Cause it's just like, you're just excited to be here. I'm just excited to be around you people. You know what I mean? I'm excited to just have an idea, put it into the world and people be like, Oh, it's cool. So, I'm not going to make you eat wings or anything like that, but I, I stole this idea from Hot Ones. We're at the final part of the show. Shout out to Hot Ones. Where, Hot right? Uh, that, that guy's like, his stomach must be insured for like a ridiculous amount of money. Yeah, it's nuts. Um, but open mic, you know, no more questions. You can say, promote, Does whatever you want. Yeah, it, it's, it, the, I always leave the end of the show to the guest, and however they want to end it, we'll end it. So with that... Whatever you want to say, it's an open mic. Um, Go for it. If you don't, if you follow me and you fuck with me, follow a TDM forever. I think I've been really excited with how we've been like posting consistently and rebranding it. I'm really like passionate about that right now. I fell out of love with the blogging for a little bit. So to kind of be at this place where I'm like excited again about that specifically is dope. So definitely follow TDM forever if you don't. Um, if you've never been to an event of mine, come out. I think I really I really enjoy people coming and just, like, kind of getting their, their first-time perspective. I love that people enjoy this and people, like, come all the time. And it's kind of like a safe space. I think building safe spaces is dope. Um, I'm open to working. I feel like that's not something I say out loud a lot, but, like, I'm open to working. I love working with other people, if it makes sense. Let's, like, you know, let's – but don't be weird. Um um i'm a hater but i love a lot of shit if you follow me on twitter you know i talk a lot of shit but like i really love a lot of shit i'm very passionate about this thing um but yeah man follow tdf forever um come to an event come kick shit with me if i'm in town come, come grab a beer with me talk to me like say what's up like let's let's build man um i'm at the point where it's like i really want to continue just fostering this energy that i have and like helping other dope shit happen um Thank you for having me, by the way. This podcast is dope. Thanks it's for coming like, on. Nah, for sure. The setup is crazy. I think I, I, I think it's interesting when like I do interviews with people. Like they interview me and they're like, I did research. I'm like, that's crazy. Like there's research to be done about me. But, like, but I it makes yeah. me <laughs> it makes but it makes me appreciate like the journey. Like I haven't thought about 2010 in forever. So it's like that's just rejuvenating. Um so like shout out to the people like us who just care about enough about our city to have these conversations with the people we deem important you know what i mean i think it's fire that like literally all my friends that listed off you're like yeah go repeat my podcast with them i'm like yeah it's fire like my friends do dope shit um 
support your homies, bro. Like if your homie does some dope shit, like it takes nothing to, to share this shit. Like I literally made a post about that. I have to, have to send it to you. <laughs> support your homies, bro. Like you feel me? Like it, it, it makes my life when when people I barely know reshare my my stuff. Never mind the homies. Like support your homies. Stop being a fucking hater. Like like I'm a hater, so like you can be a hater, but like hate on things that are actually worth hating on. Like support the homies. Support support your friends. If you're from Providence, support Providence, bro. Like, I think we're on the cusp of something of, of something great. I feel like every creative I've talked to on my trip back has been saying like, energy right now is incredible and it's different and it's been different for the past few years. But I feel like we're on the cusp of like breaking that glass ceiling. And I feel like we've been on the cusp of that for a while. And it's just like all this new energy coming in. It's me fire. That's all I have. Oh, at the Don Kuji on all social media, um, on everything really. You can add me on PSN too. Is at the Don Kuji as well. Um. Free Max B, Free Palestine. Um, yeah, that's everything. Well, thank you for coming on. Anytime. This is uh, we we just got done kicking it with Cooch. Yeah, Bring man. It full circle. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, enough. Fuck. Uh, man. I'm gonna say this out loud too. I wanna. I have a goal to like really do more rap shows in Rhode Island. So hopefully that's something we do this year. I think that's something that's one of the things that I love that I haven't done in a really long time. So that's something I want to bring back. So I'll say that on this podcast. Like hopefully in the next few months we have a rap show in Rhode Island and we we bring that that <clears throat> that energy back. But that's everything. Well, thank you for coming on. Thank it's a long time me. coming. Yeah, uh, man. Sorry. We've trying to put this no, no, we've been trying to put this together and it was uh definitely worth the wait. Um, thank you so much for coming on Anytime, bro. Thank and, you for having and me. adding to this, uh, this kind of little universe we got going on with, with nah, Providence. Keep going crazy with this, bro. You're doing incredible work. And I think like the fact that there's people documenting what we have going on in the city is remarkable. Cause I feel like these stories, these experiences that like the Nassies, the Gibrons, the Sabrinas, that all these people have are important. It's just like, if you're a creator, you want to know these people because these people are doing remarkable work. Shout out to the homies, man. Well, with that, I think that's the perfect way to end this. And to anybody listening, to anybody watching, go, 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 go support the home. Go support the homie that's on right now and all the other homies mentioned. For sure. And, uh, and do me one favor, uh, you know, fellow listener, fellow watcher, fellow fan of this, do me one favor. Keep on creating. Hey, that was good.